game. Okay, go go ahead. Um, I think the uh, screen sharing thing is disabled. I'm sorry. Kung di recording screen sharing. Okay, go ahead. GCQ tayo again. Pero alert level 4. Eh di para i-CQ lang din. Yeah. Pero um, in the... Sorry, 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 sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. Okay. Do you see it though, my screen? Yeah, I can see it. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, so, the first thing that we wanted to kind of tackle for the different typologies is the fabric building. And from last week, actually, the fabric building location we chose was in a different site from the skate park. It was actually on the elevated residential um, area. But then we felt like the fabric building should really embody the different principles that we had set last meeting. And we felt that the skate park really would be able to do that. And would be a very interesting typology that would help support the rest of the um, buildings. So, yeah. Um, so first thing that we did was kind of study the stakeholders of the site and kind of establish who we would be catering. And so we listed, yeah, the skaters and such. And um, one of the things that we wanted to really include for this was the children and residents and commuters. Since the skate park is actually near um, the LRT, we did want to be able to also possibly redesign the LRT if we can, or just be able to create a transition from the LRT to the skate park that, we'd be, that we would be designing. And for the residents and children, uh, since the skate park is actually near uh, the residential area that we want to also design for the residential typology, we were kind of looking into how we could connect the skaters with them and kind of have a potential connection with each other. I think I forgot to put the color coding, but then yeah, the green lines, as you could see, are like a good relationship with each other, while the yellow is a potential relationship with each, with each stakeholder. And then the red one is kind of uh, somewhat bad relationship where we would want to be able to um, kind of segregate the different uses for each stakeholder so that they wouldn't mix because sometimes it might be a little uh, daunting or like, yeah. Anyway, we also study the indirect because uh, within the skate park, it is surrounded by, yeah, a school and uh, with teachers and office workers that are not necessarily the main uh, people that the building would be catering, but then we did want to provide still something that they could possibly do if they would pass by the building and such. So, yeah. So, like tackling the fabric building itself, the skate park building that we would want to create, we were kind of looking into certain details that we would want to include in the building and designing of the, yeah, of the structure. So then the first thing that we wanted to talk about was graffiti culture. So one of the things that really interested us was the fact that graffiti is kind of seen in a negative connotation, but could be uplifted in a way, depending on the space it's given and uh, the people making it and the community being able to accept it as an art rather than vandalism. Because there's really been a debate between um, it being an art and a form of illegal act. Since like, I remember watching this uh, interview about, uh, there's this famous graffiti artist in New York, I think called Lady in Pink. That's her like street name. And um, they were talking about how if, like nowadays in when people would, yeah, kind of spray paint on a wall, it's either an art if you don't get arrested and vandalism if you do get arrested, arrested. So then we were kind of interested in that idea and providing a space where graffiti does belong. And we kind of studied and analyzed the relationship of graffiti and uh, skateboarding themselves because, um, well, Joe kind of mentioned a movie called Mid-90s. It's a movie 
uh, I think directed by Jonah Hill and it just kind of represents the identity of skaters and how skaters are seen or kind of gathered together as a form of family because they may be outlaws or some people who don't belong. So then providing the skate park would be a place that they do belong. And graffiti itself is a form of um, expressing identity and art and like their expression of what they feel like probably um, politics or whatever it is. And um, mainly it was the identity portion and uh, looking at interviews of actual graffiti artists, they were saying how graffiti was a form of uh, marking your territory and being able to call a place um, yours and claiming it as your own and stuff. And that's essentially what we felt skateboard um, skating is for people where they would kind of claim a space for themselves for a short period of time and are kind of shooed away after, which is similar to graffiti, which is why it's also a form of expression for them as well. And they kind of saw their connection to that form of art. And yeah, so then in our building, we would want to be able to kind of give a space for graffiti culture, like the graffiti alley in Baltimore where people would freely go and not like the ones in BGC where people are actually commissioned to do uh, those paintings on, and murals on the walls, but then actually people can do it freely without, um, yeah, without you know having to need permission or whatever. So the next thing that we wanted to kind of study was making the building typology more interesting and kind of really build on the idea of making it a skate park and not just like a space and then there's a skate park inside. So then we were looking on uh, the, the life cycle of a skateboard kind of and looking at how people have recycled skateboards in the past, making their own form of wood by compressing this wood to be able to create this kind of colorful um, pattern in the like, when it's connected to each other. And we felt like having a recycled, recycling um, component into our building would be great to add. And it could also be a, a way that the material itself could be applied onto the building. So uh, yeah, as you can see like in this photo, the main um, component that we, the material that we would want to use someone is wood for the, majority of the structure and it being a very um, interesting material since it's what it is what the, the skateboards are made out of we felt like we could use it in possibly like louvers doors columns or we feel like we can explore that more later on in the design process and then also this one um, instead of just looking at as a it as a material we were thinking of looking at the process of recycling from the before and after. Since we did want to be able to possibly have a recycling center for skateboards in the building, we did want to show um, the products themselves, like possibly furniture and flooring and such, or, and, oh, sorry. And like after that, because like skateboards are kind of, they break easily, like not easily, but then they break often like people would be able to donate their skateboards probably to this recycling um, center and the abundance can probably be used as a really great way for like an interesting wall that people will be able to see the before and what comes after once it's repurposed so then yeah that's something that we would want to be able to display and so for this one also, like not just looking at the skateboard itself, but then also the skate rink, <clears throat> we wanted to be able to kind of apply the skate park um, like terrain onto the design of the entirety of the structure itself. So looking at the ramps and the half pipes and everything, we felt like it would be interesting to explore in terms of allowing light in or possibly like assisting in 
allowing proper ventilation and everything. So then this is actually just a sample, but not necessarily how we're going to directly apply it, but then something that we would want to be able to kind of think about in our design process again. So yeah, and then another thing was um, influence ceiling. So then this one actually, we would want it to, we wanted to be able to use the terrain again to influence the architecture. So then this one kind of shows how it would be like in the ground floor and second floor, if like the terrains are overlapping each other, like they're on top of each other. So then it would create interesting caves and a ceiling where people would be able to um, feel the movement and sense of place, even just looking from above and not having to really um, skate themselves. And then this one, okay, this one's the one where we would want to kind of research on, what well, we did research on the different types of textures and materials that we would possibly use in the skate park. So Jao kind of did his research on Dan something, I don't know how to say that last name, but um, he's actually a blind skateboarder that uses um, his senses to kind of identify locations and locations within the space. And we kind of got the researching on him because of the idea of inclusivity. And we felt like this idea would really benefit our um, entire skate park and making it more effective for more people to be able to uh, use. And because like with the use of wood and concrete and everything with the different textures, there would be like different sounds when you're using a skateboard and different vibrations. So then people would be able to um, really identify where they are without having to really be too mindful or see it. So then this is actually shown. So it could be concrete and then a wood flooring, but then a supported wood flooring. Yeah. And then this is another detail that we um, were looking at to keep in mind. So then uh, it kind of shows how these minor details we need to really in, um, take into consideration because initially, well, I thought that a sharp edge would suffice for um, skate parks, but then uh, Jam made this detail showing how we kind of need to consider um, the landing of people whenever they're skating in ramps and everything because there is some sort of uh, bump or barrier that allows like the skaters to properly uh, stop their momentum or something like that. So then, yeah, these are the materials and everything. So then there would be the need for, yeah, reference points for certain um, skateboard, skating terrain. And then we also have this, it's a bubble diagram of the different uh, skate park terrains. So then as you can see, yeah, the green shows that the two. So then these are actually ramps that can be connected since like two ramps could make, um, what's it called again? Okay. Um, I think it's called a half pipe. Yeah. And then the transition, the man, which is the red line um, from like bowls to stairs and railings would need a transition because we were studying the movement of skaters themselves where they need a place to build momentum to be able to do a trick. And then after being um, doing a trick, they need space to um, kind of stop their momentum and be able to make their turns or just, yeah, not hit anybody. Um, oh, wait, sorry. And then for this one, actually, since this is the diagram for beginner and intermediate, we wanted to be able to incorporate um, certain terrains that are more shallow and easier for people to be able to learn skateboarding. I mean, we wanted to have a more inclusive community. So instead of creating like an Olympic grade skate park, we wanted to create uh, the different levels from not really knowing how to skateboard to being able to master techniques that you won't really be able to do in uh, street corners and certain areas around the city where people would usually skateboard. Um, so yeah, as you can see here, this is actually 
a mixture of bowls and then this one is more uh, flat surface tricks and everything. And then this one is, yeah, the Olympic standard that we would want to include because um, looking at the interview of the Filipino who joined the Olympics for skateboarding, I remember the interview of how she was saying how she doesn't really have a space for her to be able to train, but then was able to, with a lot of grit, she was able to accomplish what she needed to, but then um, why would she have to do that? So then we wanted to be able to create this um, more interesting and intricate terrain for those people who would want to be able to hone their skating ability and everything. So yeah, um, we kind of studied actually the Tokyo Olympic skate rink and everything. So then um, similar to that, we were looking at the yeah, undulating landing decks, and their positioning of bowls, ramps, and volcanoes. And then, yeah, so this is a um, program diagram. So it's kind of, so after developing the bubble diagram, we kind of mapped it out on the lot itself. And so this kind of shows, yeah, this is the pedestrian. If you can see my cursor, this is a pedestrian street. And then this is also a pedestrian road for cars aren't really able to access. Uh, and this is the LRT. And then this one is actually where the, um, the main vehicular road is. And so, yeah, we wanted to create entry points from near the LRT to the pedestrian area. And then there's a skate shop where we would want to be able to provide us a place where um, skaters could be able to buy their new wheels or get a new um, deck or something if it breaks. And um, yeah, and then we wanted to include yeah, the bus stop and parking for people to be able to access the building easily. And the bath, because yeah, we wanted to include that mainly for the purpose of um, the people who are skating. And we also saw it as a potential to earn revenue. I guess, I don't know if we should be thinking of that already, but um, we were, talking about this place in Clark near the big field where there's a uh, usually like a Saturday market. I forgot what it was called, but then like around those housings, there is a commercial area where there's a bike shop with a bath that you have to pay to use and everything. And actually a lot of people do use it and they earn a lot of money from it. I remember going there and um, kind of using their facilities after a tournament and they were saying how I was kind of talking to them, asking if a lot of people use it. And then they were like, yeah, a lot of people, even though like there's no tournaments, would use a bath um, after they're probably doing um, exercises around, like jogging around the field or something. So we found that to be interesting and uh, necess necessary to include in the site. And then also, uh, this one is level one, sorry, and then I kind of zoom into the skate park. So this is a skate park one and two where we felt like on level one, this could be the place for more beginner and intermediate where they would mix together and not have it very isolated from one another. Like I guess in this one, it kind of shows its separation, but then uh, it's not really a final form in terms of the, the shapes, like the ovals and everything, but then um, this kind of just shows the allocation of spaces. And then the food and drinks in the area and also the clinic. We felt like this was um, strategically placed because of the access to vehicle, like vehicles on this side. So it would be better to place it there. And then also for the second floor, um, you can see the LRT connection and we wanted to create a buffer space for the food and drinks and lounge. And um, I was kind of talking to Jao about this. We were discussing about how we would kind of want the indoor skate park on the second floor to be separate from the lounge food and LRT connection on the second floor because uh, for the sake of safety for the people who are skating, because we do expect uh, children to be able to use this space as well. So then having it connect to the LRT directly would um, 
may be the hazard for that. And as you can see, the recycling shop is here on this area, which is uh, parallel to the skate shop, perpendicular, sorry. And then for the third floor, you can see the partially opened space. So then we wanted it to be here, uh, mainly for the purpose of creating high ceiling for the second floor and having the second and third floor mixed together as um, probably one whole thing, even though there's different elevations within it. And noticing how skate parks or even just different gyms or athletic areas would have a high ceiling. We didn't want it to have like a low ceiling since usually they're in warehouse building type of things where there's larger spaces, mainly for the purpose of ventilation and not to accumulate too much heat. So this is what we kind of considered for that. And then, yeah, this is the next one. So we were talking about the next typology that we'd want to develop. Uh, so we are already kind of thinking about uh, the residential building. So our chosen location for the residential alone and not mixed with the commercial is on the elevated area. So it's actually right in front, if you could see my cursor, of the basketball court. So yeah. And then upon looking at that, um, it being elevated was already uh, for the purpose of privacy and everything. And we were looking at the way um, apartment buildings are really set nowadays where uh, it is usually just an enclosed space and then they have to go down or to walk a few blocks to a park to be able to receive that feeling of this one where being in a neighborhood or in a house, there's like a lawn of grass in front of you where you could be able to um, kind of enjoy and yeah. So then we were kind of looking at the different types of ways we could look at it. So the first thing, which we don't really want to do, which is the very linear way to look at residential buildings, we thought was like being able to access it from like an entrance and then each apartment would be um, found if depending on the floor. So then looking for like probably a friend's apartment, you're just like, oh, it's in the second floor A, like room A or something. And I kind of wanted to re-explore um, what apartment buildings could be and kind of focusing on the need for privacy and disbursement of movement. Um, we wanted to be able to look at it this way, the second one on the right, where there could be access points from each phase of the building where to be able to look for an apartment, you're like, oh, it's in phase, and then what phase instead of floor. And then from that, there's actually um, more privacy in terms of like entrance, where not much people would accumulate on a lobby or anything. And we felt like with this, we can really explore more on even the um, like having two floored apartment buildings. And because we did want to cater the families where there's more than two people and everything, we wanted to be able to kind of see and study how this would be effective. But then this shape actually isn't really final either. It's more of being able to explore what its possibilities are. And then for this one, I kind of saw this pattern like around recently. It's actually made become popular and everything. And I found the pattern of it so interesting because usually when making a structure for me, I'd put a grid first and then kind of work around it. And then discussing it together, we thought that this pattern would um, be interesting to look at and study so it could kind of influence the type of grid that we would form for um, being able to create our structure. So yeah, looking at it, we kind of formed this grid um, and we felt like it would be interesting to kind of create the um, public to semi-private to private spaces um, using this grid because of the different proportions and the variety of it. So this grid system is actually what we were kind of playing around with, but then we do feel like um, studying it more 
the ratios could possibly change for, yeah, this one. And so, yeah, this is us playing around with how it would look like. So then using this grid, we can already like, or see that this is one zone. If you could see my cursor, like entering from this phase. And then like, you can see like a hallway that um, people would be able to access and then the apartment and having like an indoor garden also would be an interesting concept to kind of think about as well. So yeah, that's it actually for us. So. Okay, uh, sorry, nakamit pala ako. Um, yeah, a beautiful presentation. Can we just move back to the previous slide? I just want to okay. say something. Okay. Okay. Okay, I guess the, the first project is a good start. And it's going to be, a, I think, a special typology. And, um, but I have to, excuse me. The research is on point. I think uh, you, you've gathered enough information about it, but I think I have to discuss something about the graffiti thing because graffiti is a result of a, uh, a certain culture, uh, et cetera. At the moment you formalize it, it may not be graffiti anymore. I don't know if you can call it graffiti anymore. Uh, so uh, it can be, you know, just, not just, but it can, it is a, a mural already if it's going to be legalized so uh i don't know if it's uh, an issue of uh, semantics so um it's something that you guys can explore because we've seen a lot of uh a mural art in bgc already even in new york etc and the moment you make it formal uh, i'm not sure if it can still be called graffiti so uh yeah. Uh, I'm not also sure if graffiti has a certain aesthetic or mural art as it's mural art can be any aesthetic or style, but just looking, just by looking at these images, you know that the font style is uh, almost similar to the other font styles of the other graffiti, but we're not a graphic design um, program, but unless you have extra time, it will be useful for your study, then probably you can also look at the type pages of uh, graffitis. But don't waste your time if you don't think you'll be able to use it in the architecture. Mm -hmm. But uh, if it, this is an, an MMA uh, course, it will be a very uh, interesting um, topic to discuss if it's a, a, a certain typeface, because I see a common typeface in graffiti art. So yeah, uh, just a, a side note and something that you guys yeah. can further dis discuss. Now, the second thing is about the skateboard idea. Uh, I commend the amount of research that you provided and uh, the quality of the presentation. Uh, just a minor note to always cite the, the sources and the reference so that we are not um, accused of plagiarism and at the same time, there's proper attribution of the images. Okay. Uh, maybe you can put it on... Uh, like a fine print so that it's not distracting. So uh, this is just a minor thing that goes for everyone. Um, but I have to remind you guys that it's not just about uh, an existing typology that you are going to design, but this is a good start, like I said. So how do you make this interesting? How do you use this information to create a new typology? Uh, because creating a skate park building is a uh, uh, it's not really new anymore because uh, we've seen that in a lot of places already. So how do you further uh, this program so that it becomes more meaningful just than, than just a skate park? How do you encourage people to go there even though you're not a skateboarder? Do you get it? So, yeah. so when, you have a skate, when you have a skate park, if you have, let's say, your Lola or Lola, I don't think they'll be invited to go there, you know? But uh, if you make it more democratic, I think you can introduce programs that integrate uh, this kind of uh, uh, worlds of uh, the, the elderly or like the world of uh, somebody who's from corporate that, you know, it's just, you know, uh, an environment that, that is normal and uh, a typical building. Like when you look at uh, shopping malls, anybody can go to a skateboarder, an elderly, etc. So how do you uh, create a skate, this a skate park world that is not um, alienating 
so that uh, the reason the, re the only reason why i'm providing you this premise because this is not a formula all the time is because i don't want you guys to just create an iteration of the skate park you know what i mean so i'm, I'm raising just other questions and challenges so that so when, when you when you were presenting this i was already imagining a lot of undulating surfaces uh hill hill type of uh, surfaces etc which is like i said a good start no i'm not saying it's wrong which which leads me to saying that actually this is the way to do it to exhaust all information that you can gather so that uh, you can use them so that uh, you can probably get ideas from this research the accumulated research that you provided so based on these ideas that you provided and the iterations actually we'll have iterations I, I i think i saw some sections can i can we move forward again like the some drawings that you created to uh re re-study there you go uh, like when you're looking at these sections you know that it's for skate park for a skateboard like where else can you use this kind of information to introduce a program so that uh you know uh, it's not just solely for skateboard skate uh uh skateboarders so just to clarify this is not an this is not formulaic and that i'm trying to integrate other users uh, but uh, i'm just trying to challenge how this building can be more than just a skate park because uh we already know what a skate park skateboard skateboard park is so how uh do you make this uh unexpected like uh, what else can you do with the skate park yeah sir okay like actually we were talking about that because we um were thinking about what would people do if they're the friends of a skateboarders like skating like people who skateboard and what do they do there rather than just standing around so then what was not included here because we felt like we should do more research on it was the different yeah terrains or like kind of um things that people would be able to do next to people who are skateboarding like a possible bleacher area with the food cart and everything and also um possibly yeah like a well john mentioned a rock climbing thing but we haven't really thought of yeah that yet. yeah that's a good start so i'm happy that you are in the right direction but i'm going to push you guys further I want you guys, because that's the obvious. Eh? The moment you see these forms, it can be suggestive of sitting areas. Then probably you can have a food court. So that is actually a a good starting point. But I want you guys to think further and how you can push push this idea further uh, to make an interesting uh, typology for that started with the skate park. Guaranteed, it's going to be mostly a skate park. Do you get it? But what if yeah. it's more than a skate park? like you can't define what it is but it's you know people can skate there people can do other stuff there uh do you guys so probably you can have a discussion on you know how these people live and how can other people who are not skateboarders enjoy this kind of environment yeah okay so uh but that's a good, that's a good starting point like recognizing the morphology that you already started with your research with the skateboard uh, with the skate park like uh this this you know like uh I'm, I'm not saying this is the idea i'm just uh, when i'm looking just providing an example when with those uh, concave surfaces it reminds me of your your bird pools etc so yeah. so things like that so i don't know I need, you need to be more imaginative and then try to uh reimagine how a skateboard park is going to be. Although I know that you have some clues there already, but I don't want you to settle with those ideas because when you saw the bubble diagram, uh, you have the bus stop, definitely it will be part of that. But I don't want you guys to settle with uh, with uh, what you're supposed to provide. Uh, try to push this program, try to create a culture around it or behind it, okay? Okay, sir, yeah. Okay, so again, thank you. I uh, know, no, sorry, uh, let's go to the housing typology. Okay. This one first. Yeah. Or? Okay. So right now, kasi, um, when I'm looking at it, you're just exploring the residential typology and what you can do with it. I think you need yeah. to produce an idea so that you can somehow modify the conditions. You can introduce more conditions because if you're just going to you analyze uh, and uh, just 
uh, what they call it, um, analyze and uh, uh, reiterate. It's just going to be, it's going to be just a very conventional undertaking uh, because that's what we do right in practice. But if you introduce uh, an idea, let's say the plantito before, I, this is just an example, definitely the, the conditions will be different. But I love the issues that you raised and I think uh, it's a good starting point as well. And then uh, how will you, sorry, can, can you move forward to the to the patterns that you... Yeah, that's fine. I mean, that, 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 that's okay. Uh, but again, it's still the same thing with the conventional practice. Uh, it's something that uh, we already explored. Maybe introduce you know, other uh, interesting uh, program or activity uh, that will make this typology uh, better. Uh, no, no, not better, but uh, interesting. Uh, because uh, if you're just going to settle with patterns, patterns and forms are already being explored in the practice. So, uh, and it doesn't really change the way people live. It's just, uh, you know, just creating a very beautiful envelope. Am I correct? I'm about, am I, am this I... is actually the um, floor plan grid thing that we would want to influence. The, yeah, not like as a screen type, yeah. more of like being able to plan it like this one. Okay. Yeah, yeah but why do you have to answer it? Answer that big question oh, okay. like that. So, I mean, like I said, it's not just about forms. Uh, it's not just, this is also a part of form. Because when you, when you say form, it's not, we're not just talking about the shape. No, we're talking about the idea, the platonic idea. So what's the highest form? That's the highest form. So basically, it's the highest form. You're trying to create uh, a different kind of uh, layering in the zones of this house, of this uh, typology. But you need to answer why. Do you get it? Do you get it? So, yeah. so that it's we're not just talking about uh, idea, uh, form, but you're also talking about content. All right? That's why we're introducing the, we are hybridizing it with, you know, with additional ideas. So uh, again, the plantito is gas gas na. Uh, I'm glad that you use the skateboard idea for the first one. Uh, maybe, I don't know. I said this is residential, you have to remember that it has to be applicable to the other residential typology. And so far the plantito, kasi, I'm not pushing plantito, I don't get me wrong. Uh, it's mm -hmm. somewhat universal. So, uh, but uh, other yeah. than that, I think it's you guys. I think you know what to do. Uh, you have the facility and the skills to do it. You just need to, you know, uh, be push your creativity much further. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you, Bea. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Um, none right now. Okay, see. Thank, thank you, you Bea. I see. Go map and. Uh, uh, ah, sige, sir. Hello, hello, hello. hello. Hello, yeah, go ahead. And uh wait long. That's an Oh my god, wait long. Uh it's Marina Buster. I want to hear Abigail uh, talk. Huh? I know, sir. I want to hear Abigail talk, huh? Oh, exactly. <laughs> Salita naman ako last night. Salita naman daw, sir. Hindi ka lang nakikinig. Joke lang. So, ayun, sir. So, for today, <laughs> ano hindi lang umpisahan, no? So for the day, sir, um, we did some like research about hydraulic technologies and other system, and we found some several interesting system that we tried to explore and incorporate it into our typology. So the systems and technology we gathered from our research are mostly from countries like Persia, India, and Israel, and we might, you know, also study the water system of the Indus Valley for like our other typologies. But answer for our first like system naman is what I go na Abby. Okay, so one of system, so one of the system that we found is the I don't know, uh, Persian Kanats or 
this is how persons before and even now in some areas get their source of water, uh, which is through the canats. Uh, these canats are dug deep enough to reach the aquifer, which is the source of water under the ground. Um, so the way they dug the tunnel is a uh, through series of water, a water well, uh, which then connected together until uh, it reaches the side of the mountain, then through the canals to distribute the water in the area, sir. So for the next one, naman, sir, is the Sringaverapura hydraulic system in India, sir. So the main usage of this system is mostly filtering water, like before, sir, like first century, ganon. Um, so the water runs through a series of water tanks to remove debris from the river. So these tanks are is directly connected to the river. <laughs> so this one, sir, is the silting chamber. It's the first tank in the system where it makes the debris from water settle down below. Then the relatively clean water will overflow, sir, to the into the next tank, which is mostly made out of bricks to store water here. And with the step inlet, sir, from this tank to another allows the much cleaner water to overflow onto the Next tank, which is the bigger one, and this serve as the primary tank and primary water tank for people to get their water. And, and there is also a circular tank to allow a shallow water activities in this system then flows to either back to the river or will be distributed to the community soon. So next man is so next, sir, is the Shawbird hydraulic system. Uh, this one, man, sir, is mostly focused on um, cooling space, uh, cooling the space or the Shawbird. Um, so there are three parts for this system. Um, the first part is the bridge, bridge E Shami, um, which is a marble slate that has texture texture to make the water splash then flows to the water basin which is yung second part oh then wala yung ano. through a series go, go. of canal inside the shabridge called uh nar e behisht mm. oh which is so this system is mostly for cooling the building which is located in india um, the next one is your Masada's water system. Uh, the way naman how in Israel collect and store water through this canal, where it is carved in the mountain so that when it rains, it collects the water. Um, so basically, like a gutter in the mountain, then this canals direct the water to this holes where it is the entryway of the water to cistern. Um, cistern is a uh, parang huge water storage na that is carved inside the mountain. So, so the last one naman, sir, is the Nabitian Water Works, water conduit system. So for this system naman, sir, it's mostly focused on the canals where they carve below the rock mountains of Jordan to pull the water and to lessen the evaporation of water. And also, this is the time where they start using parang, like piping system for, so for this, they use terracotta pipes to like bury the canals to reduce the evaporation when they are, they are directing water outside the mountains. So if you want, yeah. So after this, naman, we tried to create parang part exploration on how we can like incorporate those in a building. So for this one, naman, sir, parang like similar siya from this, which is 
you know, like a carved canal on walls, then close to a like similar to the Shingapura like water system. And also like we try to incorporate canals and stairs because we want to create, we want to like cycle because the water in the building. So with the use of gravity in stairs, we can, you know, create flow of water. So we try to interpret in different types of stairs because um, like, Kinonsider namin yung angle kasi like yung parang gano'ng kalakas yung flow. So from spiral, then yung like the U-type, then like the ramp. So sa may ramp naman, ito yung mas control yung water flow. Then parang like tinry lang namin, like in, parang buen as a whole track. Like, like i-imagine, i-imagine lang siya. So parang... Yeah, like always with like canals, then like yun. Yun pa lang, sir. Okay. Uh, Hello. Okay. Uh, okay naman siya. Um, problema lang is uh, maybe how do I put it? Uh, so, which part of uh, when I'm looking at this part exploration, how is the system applied? Like a uh, wait ah, uh, because you, you mentioned several processes. So how is this applied on the design and the party three? Uh, can we go to the stairs that you showed? Hi. At sir. Oh. Or, or at all. Yeah, that one. How? Nasa yung process yan? Because gumawa lang naman kayo ng kanal. Oh. So how is it being filtered? Because what's the use? At least I said it. Ah, nandun pa kami lang sa process, sir. Pero ano sir? Like, can I try namin kung like paano mo na namin siya sa cycle sa like like yung parang daan nato lang ng water. Then we incorporate kami ng mga like filtering system. Then yung storage area. Then sir, so bagal kayo mak. Kasi dalawa kayo nag work on this project, and then basically okay. just presenting me a canal. It's not really, um, you know, uh, you know, it's not really yes, good sir. enough. Medyo or that, pa. Oh, hindi pa. Yes, sir. But it's not surprising yet. I mean, anybody yes. can think of that. You know, kahit ako nakatanga naka lang ako sa bed ko, may isip ko yan. So ngayon, inahanap ko ngayon, uh -huh. based on what you presented, yung process na yun, paano mo siya ginamit. So kailangan niya pang isynthesis, yes, size, okay? Ah, so, ito kasi yung work ko eh. If I put trust on you so much, like uh, maybe it's not applicable to everyone. Uh, when I say, uh, when I say, isang typology muna, uh, there are students and that's one of you, Mac, and I have to be very honest, brutally honest, uh, tends to be lax. Okay, so that, yeah, I can't trust you on that part yet. Mm -hmm. But for the others, I can. You know, you need to work on that, that uh, attitude towards work. Okay, so kasi, kasi pag anong nangyari, for the rest kasi, I can trust them when I say dalawang typology muna because I know that they're going to put so much time and effort to, to develop and research and explore. You get, you're not immersing. So, uh, you know, worry ko. So, I'm just be, being honest with my sentiments. Yes, sir. galit sa'yo, pero I'm being honest with my sentiments. So, I want you to Apa. sort of... Uh, Okay lang kahit isang typology, pero, you know, give me something naman na that is substantial enough. Kasi dalawa kayo sa group. Uh, tapos, uh, hindi naman, parang hindi naman rocket science yung, ano eh, yung ginagawa ninyo. Eh. Tsaka yung, yung party na ginawa nyo ngayon, parang it's not so um, surprising. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah. Uh, any, parang anybody can think of that. Alright? Sige. Uh, okay, sige, okay. Okay, thank you, Abigail. See, who wants to go next? Sir, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Sir, can you see the screen, sir? Okay, go ahead. 
Okay, so we just to, to start off we begin the, uh, the urban fabric for me. So we decided that that the urban fabric would be a commercial or and rest and rest stop building. So who, who is it for? Is it it's for the commuters and the drivers and why? Because there are as ano, parang we we realize that our site is actually yung Platon, like my mga terminals and and doon yung mga kung there the the people mababasa sa mga passenger yung mga, the the commuter the commuters are using the underpass still kasi yung, because in a, in the site there's pedestrian access like yung, like Adrius didn't actually change it and so our goal is to create an eco green fabric building for people to stay and to make use and give importance to the health benefits and give importance to the health benefits of land so naging plantito plantita kami okay lang yan so uh, you went to that because that was your advice last week oh kasi yes, okay then. no yan ano okay naman um Siguro, especially for the new new guys, uh, okay lang magplantito and plantita naman. At least somehow, um, the way you can learn it is actually to to try it first. And you have good examples naman in my design for classes. So at least you can um, try it. Not copy, ah. at least you can look at it and then probably approach it differently. Okay? So at least matry niyo muna. Okay. So... So we started the site like yung the, the site is actually the the park and ride so since park and ride is actually a parking building like for a parking area and bus terminal uh, according to some sources and there are that exists because there's still 7-Eleven stops and something so we decided that it's a commercial building and or a commercial center plus are a stop so that passengers can stay over and have tea since Pantita Pantita kami. So the second picture is the Pearl Drive Commercial Center. This is our actually our inspiration to why or the inspiration on why we settle on the commercial center because there are because vehicles can stop by there to, to have a quick break and, and there are many eateries. So Pearl Drive is located at Fairview Kesson City. So our state, our case study is we found this at arcdaily.com, the Father Meeting and Visitor Center in Finland. So in the, in that building, may there's a green room which 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 houses the co their cocoa plants and sugar canes, and has different exhibitions and rooms for exhibitions and eateries. So this is the there's their floor plan as 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 you can see there are there are areas for food for eateries and green in green rooms and exhibitions spaces. So so like we decide we maybe there's instead of just eateries there are there will also be an art gallery or some exhibition area so that people can just view art or, or something. And also parking area, we decided na for vehicles na rin kasi because there are many passing cars. So this is just for evidence based on what we're going to do. Like, babak, like why plantito plantita is because we, so because, so make the, so to make the, to, to for, for plants to remove pollutants from polluted air and actually we have we, we haven't actually made like a, a deep research on this but phyto remediation is is like removing pollutants from polluted air and as, as and can remediate the contaminated soil so so we're we're, we're thinking that Ready to so for utilities when we get there, because it it can it can bring soil back to beneficial use, 
in soil and and prevent the spread of pollution in air and water. So we're just still going to the to do that. And we actually researched the different kinds of plants to to use in yung mga for, for the fabric building. So start of the piece the, the piece really is a low maintenance plant and goes in without sunlight can purify air and and prevents mild formation. Snefnella is yung, can absorb toxins then and tolerate direct sunlight. Okay, so yeah, while we were, uh, yeah, we basically researched a bunch of plants that we could use. And then one of our suggestions was that what if there's like a program in the building where you can either eat or drink something while we wait for your transportation or while commuting. So I started searching for plants that could be used for tea. And the reason for that was just, it's because um, initially I was doing search for urban planning but then I realized that it's the space of the site might be too small for an actual urban farm to consistently provide for maybe like a restaurant an in-house restaurant so I went with something where the yield doesn't need to be like super heavy so we went with so first one would be Malungay so could also be used for bread and I also like put the details of like what kind of climate the Malungay compiled and the vegetable companion plants for the particular plant. So, the benefits of Malungay. So, part of the reason why I wanted to use Malungay is because it's like considered as like some sort of super plant because it has a lot of health benefits. So next would be yung lemongrass or tanglad, and it's usually yeah, it's like survive. It can survive within the Philippines, and it's commonly found around the Philippines, and it's usually used for like as like a help for helping with health and cold. Are like the following health benefits from lemongrass. So it helps with gastrointestinal problems, vomiting, fever, lowering cholesterol, boosting oral health, among many others. So it be Labundi, which is like very popular in the Philippines, you do how much it is used in uh, commercial drugs for coughs and colds. And the reason why I wanted to like go with things that are concerned with respiratory problems is because but then we're living in a pandemic and we are much more worried when they have when they're suffering with coughs and colds. So these are the health benefits of the body. So it can also be used for preventing warm infestation, for skin diseases, for muscle pain and that. And for anxiety and relaxation. Could be fragrant pandan. So yeah, pandan can also be converted into tea in the Philippines and it's also very abundant in the country. So those are some of its some health benefits, primarily lowering blood sugar and boosting oral health. And it could also be used in, as, a, as an ingredient in various dishes. Butterfly bee flower. So it's a kind of like a shrub, or it's like a shrub that has this certain blue flower that's said to have a lot of health benefits. And yeah. And uh, since it's like a shrub or a vine, it would be a lot of like support, which might be like implemented into the building. And yeah, it has numerous health benefits, such as, such as improving brain health and like anti cancer and anti inflammatory. Also lowers the pressure and improves various treatment. 
Let's check those. Sir. Let's check. We're still deciding on what plan to use. Okay, I I would advise that you focus more on just probably one because you guys are going to develop a culture and a program behind it. Let's see if you're going to talk about Malungay. Uh, definitely you need to search about, you need to provide drawings of the anatomy of the Malungay, how the sizes of that, the dimensions of that, the moment it grows from a certain you know, uh, stage, ilang taon ba yan? And then how many pots you're going to create. So basically that will create the information uh, for the building so i want you guys to already you know um jump uh and take a leap already in creating architectural drawings the moment you focus on one or two i would suggest so just one and then probably uh we can expand later on so if you're going to choose let's say a malungay uh research about you know uh the sizes the anatomy and then probably the plant how much how many yields how how long how much uh, uh how much malungay plant do you need to make in order to supply your restaurant or etc um like the kind of uh, a building that you're going to create will be based on this research so i want you guys to be more visual um, i mean this is okay you guys are still researching it but in our studio the visual the more visual it is the better the easier for you guys to translate it into something architectural. Uh, try to treat it as a drawing exercise. For example, uh, when you are enumerating the different sizes of the Malungay tree based on the age. Uh, so, lalagyan nyo siya ng dimension, lalagyan nyo ng size, lalagyan siya ng drawing. So, create like a, an architectural drawing. It's like drawing a floor plan or an elevation. But this time, the Malungay, because you need to find out the uh the sizes the dimension so that's uh the creative research that we're talking about using architectural means to prove it so find out how many uh, malungay can fit in a certain area then probably you can put make a diagram like how 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 deep the root the root is uh etc and then how the method of harvesting will require a certain basin etc so I, I, did you guys watch the plan the uh, the presentation of uh, my design for okay that's okay that's not, that's not okay that's not enough you need to watch it the one of mac the one of uh uh, uh everyone basically so uh because that you will see how they were able to use the research that will help them draw the different elements okay so for now, I guess uh, focus on my advice is uh, focus on one tree and then generate drawings uh, with that and then generate, uh, generate activities behind that, create a bubble diagram for that. And then, uh, uh, yeah, and then try to generate a floor plan. And you need to try it, you know. Uh, you cannot submit, you cannot do this on a weekly basis now when you just put PowerPoint and you're not exercising your role as an architect by, by you know, exercising drawing. You need to draw. You need to, to jump to it. Okay, you need to try. And then my role is, you know, I cannot criticize because, you know, uh, this is all words. You know, I, I can criticize drawings and plans, right? So uh, and then maybe when I see the bubble diagram or the floor plan, then, you know, uh, then, you know, we're talking about architecture and design already. And then I can say how your research was applied, just like how I criticized the work of Mac and Ulpindo before you, like I was, they were able to draw it clearly. So I was able to criticize it properly, architecturally. Like I was looking for um, how they applied the research towards the drawing. And, you know, unfortunately, all the processes that they talk about uh, were not applied to the drawing. Basically just one part of it, basically just to convey water. So how do you guys generate drawings or architectural forms using this information? So you're not providing me the right research yet. Um, like I said, uh, I want you guys to watch it. I have to reiterate because one group last time didn't even watch it. So, uh, so you know, I don't know how to start with the, con I don't know how to start the conversation if you're not doing your part. So, uh, yeah, so 
what do you call that? Uh, do you have an idea what to do, Antea and Ma Maureen? Um, search more, pick up a line, and then the specifications of the plan. Then yeah, very good. Figure okay. out the program based on that particular plan. Oh, gawa kayo ng program. Kunyari, naisip nyong, uh, yeah, very good. Naisip nyong gawa ng tea house based on the malunggay, etc. Enumerate nyo muna all these ideas na program na pwede nyong that you can generate from it. No? Let's all gather this information Then probably we can synthesize everything later on. But it's very important that you learn about the plan first and then try to translate it to drawings. And then, because uh, architecture is, is very physical, so you need, to, you need the physical properties of it. And then later on, how, what is the process in harvesting it? Uh, if you're going to create a tea out of the molongai, what is the process behind it? You need to enumerate all of this information. Do you get it? Yes. Kasi ganito yan eh. Ang pag-expand ng yung research is based on you guys. And uh, your commitment and your willingness to immerse in it. So uh, it's not about, am I doing so much or am I doing enough? No, it's not. It's about satisfying your curiosity and then using the tools that you learn from design one to design six, whether or not you were under my studio because in, in the previous studios, you learn how to draw. You know, you know how to make a floor plan. You get it? All you just need to do is to how is to synthesize all the information that you have and be able to uh, use it in the design development. Yes, sir. Okay. So also, I know Antea is shy. I'm sure Maureen is more shy, uh, but Antea <laughs> is more familiar with me. If you have any reservations, you know, I, you can message me. I can video call so that the way I can guide you further. All right, if you guys are stuck, okay, but uh, but try it first, okay, try to draw it first. Because uh, the reason why I'm saying this because you know, uh, when I'm not satisfied with what I'm seeing, I will tell you, naman, I don't sugarcoat. So, uh, when I'm looking at this, kasi, based on my impression, I could be wrong, is that you are still holding back because you are unsure of what to do. So, uh, you have to let me know, okay. Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, you can DM me just in case. All right? And then we'll, we can probably schedule it. If ever, lang, if ever. But you need to try it first. Because I cannot judge this based on this uh, PowerPoint because if they're all just basically text and information that you can just get from the internet. So your role nyo as an architect and as an educating individual, wala pa, hindi pa nasisynthesize. Kailangan kasi ang pagpapresent nyo sa design class is basically about your re realization. It's not, you don't, you don't bombard your professor with information that I can gather from the internet. Do you get it? Because I don't, I don't need those. I need, what I need to, to see is your process on how you were able to use this information to generate ideas and uh, drawings and floor plans. Do you follow guys? Okay, but I'm not this. I'm not uh, devaluing the research. Don't get me wrong; it will still be part of it. But uh, I want to zero in to the things that you need to learn, because we only have 13 weeks, and I I feel like I need to focus on those rather than those things that you know you that uh, you can teach in five you know five minutes. The one that I'm trying to teach you is the process behind it and you know some of these guys took three terms or more to learn that okay that's why i'm zeroing on how you use the information that you have to create that design idea okay that's why if you notice if you were listening i hope you were uh nabol ko si si abigail and si mac when they were talking about their party okay naman yung drawing maganda yung drawing Ang tanong ko, sa dami na sinabi nila about the process of filtering the water, nasaan sa party? Saan nila ginamit? Do you get it? Isang process lang, isang process lang yung pinakita nila. 
Then, isa, isa lang yung isang process lang nung research nila, yung in-apply nila. Do you get it? So I want you guys to be able uh, to use your research. Uh, but of course, uh, with, with in your case, I want you guys to do it step by step. Um, and then, um, yeah, and then the, 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 the step that I showed you, do that first and then later on, uh, we can move forward. And, and if you can already, I explore how to make programs from it then do so and then probably we can expand further and how to present it later on we can actually refine it and develop it but uh, try draw it, drawing them first okay yes sir, sir thank you sir okay don't get intimidated huh i'm just very straightforward okay sige go ahead uh thank you uh, Anteya. if you have any questions just let me know Anteya and bernadette Okay, who wants to go next, guys? Sir. Wait lang, sir. Medyo nagbagal. Nag-lag yung laptop. Okay, sige. Ay, yun ang mahuli, ha? Late na kasi last time, eh. <laughs> Sorry about that. Ganun talaga. Pero kasi, ni encourage ko rin everyone to tune in so that uh, you guys can learn from each other. So kahit naman na, kunyari, uh, uh, may gina pwede naman kayong gumawa ng iba. At least nakikinig kayo and then you get curious. Then you, look, you can look at the presentation as well. Sir, kita na ba? Okay, okay go ahead. Uh, uh, just a recap from last time, right, from the urban rainforest. So uh, we still did more research on <clears throat> how it may also affect uh, the architecture as well. So from uh, this report, we'll be focusing more on um, um, our exploration of materials, our programs as well, that would help us guide to our, in creating our final form for the structure and also the <clears throat> um, other materials or parang, uh, structures that could help us incorporate um, other than sunlight and also ventilation. Uh, so for this one is uh, our, uh, we made this bubble diagram as a guide. Uh, we may, we're still doing or researching more so that it may improve but this is what we have so far uh it's only a guide for us now and more programs might be added as uh the following weeks uh go on that on also help us um get also the parang the, map, the map view on where would where would we place our entrance and exit as well and also the form if it if it will be there for you know, fit well on the site itself. Okay, so for the research phase, what we wanted to do was to take a look at Spanish colonial architecture that is currently found within Intramuros. So we took for example um, existing structures such as San Agustin Church the Fort Santiago, and we wanted to dissect what made the identity of Intramuros. So we took it upon ourselves to research on how it was built, the history, and how it affects um, the overall existence, and how the users adapt to the climate and earthquakes. Again, okay, next slide. So for example, it's the city of stone. Mm -hmm. Spaniards built the city of Manila in stone to replace the ruins of burnt building. Heritage structures were made of volcanic tuff. It is also known as adobe soil in the Philippines, and it can be found in Manila Bay. Some clay came from various cities across, across the country. So what we found out was the 
clay that was built for the forts and the buildings in Intramuros, they actually came from the Bay of Manila Bay. And the adobe soil's main purpose is to withstand fire and earthquakes because San Agustin Church, it was primarily made out of timber, but then it was burnt down by the Chinese men. So they decided to rebuild it and rebuild it again with stone. Okay, next. The volcanic tuff or adobe soil, um, it's an earth material and it comes in two forms. So there's the fissured one and slabs of rocks. Spaniards use adobe for upper levels of buildings but then the frequency of earthquakes called for lighter materials. So these bricks were also used as decorative materials. For the decorative material part, they actually mixed it with plaster to create a finer finish. So there were two main purposes back then. The first one, it was used for its stability against um, earthquakes. And then another one was um, more so for um, decorative finishes because they wanted their buildings to give off a warm feeling and also to resonate with the history and culture of the buildings found within Intramuros. Okay, next one. Next slide. Okay, so the adobe soil, it can actually be found in the ground all over Manila. So the city of Manila, it's abundant with clay. For thousands of years, weathering of the plastic, pyroclastic ash and tough with the presence of water. So mainly from the bodies of water in Manila Bay and Laguna Lake. So these bodies of water helped with the moisture content of the soil. So for example, in the moat of Intramuros, they um, actually covered that from the soil found from the Bay of Manila. Okay, next one. Okay, so we also decided to further dissect um, the heritage of Manila. So for example, the ever famous Bay na Bato. So it's primarily made out of two, um, two elements. It's timber and stone. The timber one, it was made primarily because of the earthquakes in Manila. They used to use um, adobe soil, but then because of the earthquakes, it um, tended to crumble. So they opted for lighter materials. So found within the Bayanabato, you can find um, uh, wooden columns, wooden beams, Within staircases, it's very light, but um, at the ground floor, the flooring and the walls and the structural system, it's made out of stone. The next slide. So what we wanted to do first with this research is to do a design deconstruction of Bainabato. So we took out all of the important elements that make up um, these heritage homes and reintroduce them. So for example, the Callado windows, it's in um, Callado windows are intricately designed room dividers and its main purpose is to circulate air. Same with the Capiz Ventanas, um, they're wooden window panels and they're often in sliding styles. Another one that is used in modern time is the screens or mesh screen panels in between windows to prevent insects. And then another element is parillas. Another, it, parillas are more common in modern structures. So they're metal grills used in modern homes, primarily for security. And then another window element, it's the persiana or louver window. So persianas are placed above the callados or capis ventanas um, to ventilate air um, along the ceiling. Okay, the next slide. Uh, okay, so this is one of our, <coughs> sorry, 
uh, for explor- exploration of materials. So first we have bamboo. So we're just actually thinking about it, how we're going to incorporate it to our uh, structure, especially in the Aroceros Park. Uh, next would be capis. I think that's the shells. So what we were thinking is, I think not uh, making it into tiles. And also, since it, it is parang waterproof, siya, so water tends to slide down from it. So we were thinking if, what if we placed it uh, like uh, on top of the structure? So at least when it rains, it slides down to each side. Not only that it gives it to the the green side of it, but we can also incorporate it to different aspects of parang this side of the wall. So, and also next are mud bricks and wired mesh. For wired mesh, if you can see the picture on the left side there, it's like um on the inside, uh, there's like a re- rebar. And it's also uh, with cement, but that's just like a small portion of the inside and the outside will be Mostly rocks, na rock stones, pro- probably sand and if possible soil, the thick ones, and also they were be, they're gonna be covered in wires so that we can hold them together, so that we would we would not use that much of a cement, so we would just use the materials like around us, like the stone itself. Uh, next would be rammed earth, if possible. We would we were thinking where would we incorporate that, especially in the inner side, where um the green area we might add that kind of material for a certain structure that could at least uh connect to its parang research facility from the uh, spe- uh the pro- uh the bubble diagram we showed earlier so this one next would be parang type of tri- uh, triangle walled uh my holes and stuff uh, i didn't I didn't get to, or we didn't get to put here the zoom in version because we're planning to also at least put some plants in it. So not just only it gives out uh, uh, sunlight shoots through the wall and that only, not only that it lights the path, as well, uh, lights the room and the path as well in the inside, but also cool air, especially in different season. Uh, if it's summer, at least wind can go in. So not much electric- electricity would be used. Okay, so for our concept, it's the city of Vistas, one of our ideas. Burnham stated that a city should have a series of Vistas. So we wanted to reintroduce the beauty of Intramural surrounding. So we want to allow residents to have a different perspective of Manila. So for our idea, um, we wanted to incorporate also like underground passageways or underground uh, student centers that are made out of stone. So the inspiration took from the canals or tunnels of Fort Santiago because it gives off um, a more ambient atmosphere. And then above the underground, there's like a viewing center that's made out of bamboo or lighter materials that could be covered in mud that's mixed with plaster so that it prevents the harsh sunlight from coming in from certain angles of the building while the other part of the building it's exposed to the vistas and are possibly made with glass or cuppies or whichever translucent materials can be given to view the nature of Intramuros. Okay, next slide. So the concept is um, mainly for it to be community responsive. So design built to foster habitable communities. Since Intramuros is a fast-paced city, we wanted the concepts to be pragmatic since it's the essence of um, Manila architecture. Okay, next slide. And another one is, since we are deconstructing like the Bahay na Bato, we wanted to deconstruct and adapt to its main elements and reintroduce them to the citizens of Manila. So dissecting like important elements of Spanish colonial architecture 
and then representing them to um, the needs of um, Manila citizens. So uh, terminals, tricycle terminals, bus terminals, anything that helps with the fast-paced city of Manila. So that's all we have for now, sir. Yes, sir, that's what we have been doing so far. So, okay. um, this is a, a very good submission. And uh, maybe let's focus first on the presentation presentation so that you can you can better be assisted on the the methodology. Uh, wait lang, sorry, somebody said can can you can you give me two minutes line need to use the toilet? No, that's it.
Uh, hello, Justin and Joanna. Okay. Yes, sir. So beautiful. Sir, want me to share my screen, Papa, sir? Ah, yes, please. Better. Oh, good music, sir. Okay, especially the drawings with uh, the section, etc. Because right now, uh, it looks good, but I want to, you guys to always work with scale. Uh, week 4, yeah. 10. Week 4, 10. Because I wanted to get used to it because... Sorry, what? Uh, week 4, 10. Okay. The reason why I want you guys to work with scale already, like treat it like, you know, the diagrams can be like a combination of a technical drawing and a presentation drawing. And uh, you've seen this in the work of Bea. Uh, the drawing is really professional. But uh, if you guys find it still too tedious at this process, at stage of the design process, pwede namang manual, katulad ng ginawa nila, Mac, maganda naman yung drawing nila. But later on, you need to migrate it to something digital. Uh, the reason why this is, uh, I'm reiterating, because this doesn't look scaled. Maybe it is scaled in SketchUp and then you transport it. Because uh, I want you guys to have that awareness with uh, actual precise measurements already, because this is how the practice works. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, this is how the practice works. And uh, that way you can already transport even the smallest element of your idea into the architecture already because you're aware of the sizes already. And at the same time, if I'm the client and I'm familiar with measurements and scale, you know, I'm already instantly aware of, uh, of that idea. So uh, can we, can, can you exit this slide? Uh, okay. The idea of uh, the, because what you did for the case study of the Bahay na Bato, uh, it's actually good. But uh, what you're doing is basically um, just reusing the elements um, of the Bahay na Bato, which is you can set aside and probably look into it later if it's still applicable. I want you guys to explore the idea of um, uh, a typology and how people will use the building in a very different environment. Uh, and then probably you can still incorporate some of the ideas that you deconstructed or the elements that you extracted from the Bahay na Bato. The idea of the uh, rainforest is good. I remember Antea talking about, you know, not having uh, the enough yield for, uh, for enough yield. Um, I mean, the, the master plan can actually help with that. Um, the idea is maybe the entire community is doing the same thing. So all together, when you combine all the yield, you provide enough uh, supply. But siempre, our goal is that your typology can provide enough supply. I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, you were talking about, did you say bamboo? Or what, what's, what's the plant again that you were talking about, Kanina, when you were talking about uh, week uh, before Dash 9? Okay, bamboo, uh, ayun, uh, just like, kasi um, our, I think you, I understand the Bahay na Bato reference because you probably got it from the presenter last week. Uh, like I said, it's not useless. It's going to be referenced later on, but now let's focus on the idea first, which is basically you know, the idea that you are talking about, like how can you make use of this information, like the bamboo, you need to know the sizes of that, or if it's going to be, a, yeah, basically the bamboo, for instance, uh, you need to expound on that and then try to find out how a, a, a residential building can propagate more bamboo. Definitely you will need more planting areas or plant boxes for that. You need enough height, etc. So it's just an example. So we're doing an idea base. So let's uh, zero in onto the idea first and how you can create more information with it. And then uh, how do you affect uh, this information with the building systems in, in your typology? Remember my lecture on the different building systems, uh, the plumbing, the envelope, et cetera. How do you change the residential typology by addressing all those systems that uh, I presented last time and by using bamboo, for instance, 
You get it? Diba? If you notice, Bea, yeah, they're talking about uh, bam, uh, skateboard. Sa kanila, skateboard, diba? So, ang layo. Pero it's okay. But uh, we entertain those ideas that are relevant to the city, the, to the master plan, and then uh, relevant that will be useful for the stakeholders. And then the, the, the purpose is how do you use any crazy idea? In crazy idea naman yung kailangan useful lang sa master plan uh, to influence the, the design of the building. You get it? So, uh, uh, okay, is, was that, uh, does that make sense? Sir, sir, uh, just uh, clarify lang. Sir, so, sir, do you have to incorporate an, uh, an activity to the user so that it can make a not really significant change to its, you know, uh, that will be in our structure? Ba, sir? Tama ba? Oh, or... uh, like actually, wala siyang ano eh, wala namang rule or walang direct formula. Uh, for instance, yung sinabi ko kanina about the malunggay. Uh, when we say malunggay, of course, you have, pag nag-research kayo, you have all those properties and characteristics and then the things that you can do with it. So basically, you can have a T. So probably the idea is that you can have a, 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 a what do you call it, a a tea uh, a tea shop below so basically if you have a tea shop what do you require definitely the malunggay so how do you harvest it so how do you create a program like a residential typology that allows you to plant a lot of malunggay that allows you to harvest it like it's part of your life daily life and then put it in the tea shop below do you get it so basically the architecture is based on that process so Pwedeng mauna yung ano yung malunggay muna na research na o malunggay na puro drawing sa measurements kasi ini-enumerate niyo pa siya eh parang kumbaga gumagawa pa kayo ng uh, specimen study and then how do you put it in the building so ngayon pag ginawa yung building ano yung pwedeng yung gawin do sa sa malunggay sa information na ginamit niyo so does that make sense okay yes sir in totoo ha <laughs> yes sir Okay, so basically wala siyang rule talaga kaya ang medyo mahirap ituro tong creative exploration eh. But uh, what we're looking for is the, the is the process behind it. Like for example, sinabi niyo may may tea shop. Oh, kunya rin nakagawa kayo ng ano, uh, example kayo gawa ni Janil Gan, yung yung mga parang columns niya na nagpa-flower ano kasi because uh, that that flowering that parang nagbo-bloom yung mga columns niya because she needs that enough space for the roots of the abaca tree. And at the same time, because of that space that she was able to create, then it provided her balconies. So in a way, nag yung impression natin sa building na, na dahil, dahil bahay, may balcony, dahil sa harap ng ano. So basically, nagkakaroon ang, ang generation ng, ng building ninyo is based on the idea whether it's a skateboard, whether it's a plant, uh, whether or anything, they get it? So, yun. And then probably we can add the bahay na ba to skins later on that if it's going to be relevant. But kasi ang, ang focus natin, if let's say you focus on the bamboo, yung bamboo. How do you propagate bamboo? How do you use the product of bamboo? And how do you harvest it? You know, like it's part of the daily life of its inhabitants, of its users. You got, you get it, guys. Awesome. So the, the, I don't want you guys to have an impression of malitong ginawa niyo this time, ha? Huh? Again, it's all about uh, you trying it first. So may nakuha tayo because of your effort to show me something. So uh, definitely, I would imagine that the bahay na bato elements might be useful later on. But I want you guys to focus on the idea and then try to create information architectural information out of it. When you see architectural information, my architectural drawing, kasama na din yung floor plan. So, uh, pag yun ang question sa'yo, gagawa ka ng floor plan based on the bamboo, ano kailangan mong gawin? Uh, so, harvesting, paano mo siya i-harvest? Siyempre, yung planting muna, paano mo siya ipapropagate? Paano mo siya i-maximum yung yield? Uh, so, definitely, lalagay niya sa rooftop. Pero kung di nakasya sa rooftop, paano sa, sa mga walls? So dahil meron ka sa wall, enough na ba siya para maging wall? So in a way, nagbabago na yung wall system, di ba? So, uh, ayun. Ganun, na, ganun yung basically we're expecting based on this. 
in a way, ginawa nyo na siya sa bahay na ba ito nung deconstruct kayo? Paano siya gagamitin yung kapis? Paano niya gagamitin yung, yung uh, wire mesh, etc.? So, in effect, ganong idea, ganong process pa din. Ginagamit nyo pa rin yung alam nyo so that uh, you can zero in into a very specific idea or topic. Okay. Can I get your opinion on one topology, sure. typology that we made? Okay, no, Justin, no. can you show the dome diagram thing? So sir. Okay. Yeah, that one. So sir, one of the ideas we thought was since the um, soil that was made for the moat was made from adobe soil, we thought that what if we dug up part of that moat that moat and then made it into bricks so like sifting it and mixing it with a variety of plaster to make it more finer so that the bricks become porous and then we turn that uh those bricks into like a dome like structure so the bricks they can either absorb water or they can ventilate the air and then the building can be um, an open building for the community, such as a community center or a student um, library or a tourist spot. And then other parts of the building or other parts of the dome can be structurally made also with bamboo so that it's lighter. Yeah, like I said, um... This is okay because this is the status quo of architecture. Uh, when I say status quo, this is what we know already. So uh, we're looking for you know other ways. I mean, this is still usable, but uh, uh, but um, I want you guys to look for other ways to use bamboo. Uh, Kasi right now, you're just using it as a roofing material, right? And you see examples of this abroad already. So uh, basically, if the idea is the, the bamboo, you're not just using it as a material, but as a way of life and uh, as an information to inform the idea of the building. Kasi dito kasi, ginawa mo lang siyang element ng building. Ginawa mo lang siyang bubong, right? Yes. So, 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 so. When you say uh, idea base or idea research, that will control everything, even the lifestyle of people. Because uh, kung kasi kung ganito yung uh, methodology natin, ang uh, you know, ang madali lang to. I think conventional kasi pwedeng balat ng saging, gawin kong bubong. Di alam mo yun, pwedeng kahit ano, pwedeng ganun eh. Pero what we're talking about is, even the program is influenced uh, because you have the information on, on on the idea that you propose. Katulad ng skateboard na pinakita ni Bea kanina, if you were following, uh, di naman niya pinropose gumawa ng wall na made of skateboard, right? But she's talking about how people are using it. Uh, and then how... Uh, that lifestyle can be developed further, which is still a question that is going to be answered next week. So, yung plantita kasi, pinakamadali, kasi nga, madaling sagutin eh. Madaling sagutin, kunyari, ganong kalaki paso ang kailangan mong i-provide for uh, the malunggay. So, that alone can already change uh, the, the flooring of the architecture, right? So, uh, yun yung sinasabi natin. And then, dami malungga ka, sama pa siya pwedeng gamitin as to influence the architecture. Do you get it? Yes, sir. Yun. Kung baga, ano, uh, nag i kayo ng building. Yun yung idea. nag i kayo ng building based on one single idea. So, how do you invent a building? Kasi kung, kung eto, yung kunyari, yung uh, may bubong ka. Maganda naman doon, get me wrong ha. Maganda tong architecture na yan na pinopropose nyo. Pero kasi hindi ito yung goal natin. Ang goal natin, kasi ang goal na ito is basically using lang the material. It's just utilizing it. Uh, ang goal natin is to generate an idea of a building based on 
you know, a proposed idea. Pag sinabi natin idea building, we're not just talking about the skin, we're not just talking about the structure, like all throughout, even the, how people will live in it. Okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir, noted. Okay. Did you get, somehow, did that make sense somehow? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, guys. So you Thank you, sir. Here. So can we go next? Yeah, go. May tanong ako. So sorry, ha. Pasko lang yung recording. Okay, game. Wait lang. Julian, dyan ba? Hmm, game. In. Uh, hold on. Ano mo balik? Eh. Uh, so for this week, uh, we looked at what we already had for the suggestive of uh, urban fabric. So our malls and the uh, elevated park. So we found it. Uh, it's kind of uh, parang may suggestive na siya ng something special for our design or the whole project. So we wanted to explore on that on residential area so combining all the research we had last week uh, the most prominent ones were the balcony typology the shared courtyard of Entremuros, uh, the upper level living of Bahay Kubo and the Bahay Nabato and the personal garden we wanted to create so that uh, we can bring the outdoors to the users directly so, uh, we created this. So, this area is our residential block for the Ermita side. So, we wanted to create it as an port prototype first before uh, moving on to the next ones. So, uh, so, we lifted this purple area. This purple area is the green space. So we lifted it up and then we created uh, uh, lumulubogs uh, here and on the other side. So why, why did we do that? Because uh, going around uh, Universal Studios in Singapore, I was walking around and then uh, when we were researching, nakita namin na there's actually green roofs on almost every building there. So when I was there, I, was, I had no idea. So what we wanted to do is we uh, make it visible to the people around so that they, uh, not only does the users of the, each building uh, know that there's a green roof, but also the passers-by, the ones living outside, and everyone. So it creates this undulation that also blocks the noise from the commercial area. And then we... we uh, remove the top, the flat top here, and cut it through the major alleyways to connect this side to this side. And then after that, we accentuated the, the blocks underneath to make it pierce through the green space. So it, uh, it's similar to uh, maybe the Hobbit village that... Uh, it's sur surrounded by green space, yet there are small openings, just like uh, our mounds, where there are openings that can make you go underneath the tunnels. And then the next step was to uh, make it terraced so that it's more uh, human scaled or it's flat, yet it's following the contour of the undulations. Uh, this is the diagrammatic uh, blocks of the residential typology. So we're planning to create uh, the commercial area underneath, but then not for every block, but uh, only for some so that it doesn't uh, make it too noisy for the people living. And then we also uh, created it 
uh, a smaller one. I mean, an iteration that made it smaller so that it's arcaded. And then this purple area is the green space that's cutting through the entire building. So this is how we started from Arctis 5. Then here's the result of that process. And this is the section showing the undulation and how people can interact with each other. Since our uh, idea was to make people visible. So from here, you can see people here and underneath. And also uh, creates like a hill type of land that people can enjoy and go up. And then, then Julian. So that's that's for the residential typology. And for another typology, we actually, we actually tried exploring on the utilities. Pero medyo nahirapan kami dun, sir, kasi uh, we were trying not to be too reliant on machines, pero the only utility building that we could think of was a uh, something related to water. So, medyo tinabi muna namin yung idea na yun, and we tried looking for other places in our site that we can develop. So, we looked into our marketplace area on the top part dun sa site, and we uh, thought of other typologies that we can integrate with the marketplace. And we uh, we were looking into uh, different kinds of workshops, like uh, places where different products are made uh, that could be relevant to the area. So uh, in the area, the, the relevant things that we saw were like uh, watchmaking and uh, jewelry. And we noticed that there were there was a lot of like clothes shop mga ukay ukay, especially in the Cariedo area near the site. So we we kind of observed that like there was a lot of clothes that was being sold but not no one's really buying them. And we we kind of realized that there's a lot of clothes that are almost being wasted. So we looked into how clothes and textile in general could be recycled into uh, yeah, recycled into clothes or different products. And we saw the process, uh, next slide, uh, we saw the process of recycling clothes. So uh, this is kind of just like the process and we're not, we don't really have a uh, party or a form that we derive out of it. But uh, yeah, so for this uh, public utility, a uh, public building, we, we just have the uh, research part done. So uh, basically, when when recycling clothes, they start with the collection and sorting of the clothes. Then they shred the clothes into they shred the fabric into like small cotton like uh, pieces. Then they mix it with a a, a new uh, what do you call this new fiber that makes the fabric stronger. Then they kind of flatten it into a uh, the process is called webbing. They, fa they flatten it into a new uh, uh, fabric. So uh, this like cotton-like fabric is then spooled into a new yarn, which is used to create um, new clothes, basically. So, so yeah, that's kind of the cycle of the clothes that we discovered. And uh, like I said, we don't have a uh, building typology designed out of this yet but we're kind of like imagine imagining some sort of uh, place like a marketplace where where people cannot just uh, buy clothes but they can also like dispose of clothes and have it recycled and turn it to new clothes something like that so yeah, uh, that's, yeah. yeah. and and since uh, our agenda for uh, last year was to make this a the a place where you can work, play, and live. Uh, this is the part where you can work and make a living for those users inside the city. And, and basically, that's all palang. Pero 
uh, we were planning on conti continuing this part. That's all for it. Diba yan, half-bake na naman? Hindi, <laughs> ito kasi ngayon lang eh. <laughs> Sorry sir, nag-focus kami masyado sa residential. Okay, eh yung residential nyo, very BRK. It's, actually, it's now conventional. It's not so uh, surprising anymore. Uh, it's like the high line with undulating services. You're not even reflecting the structural part. Ang, ang nipis ng profile na yan. No? So, I don't think that's possible without you know um the structural and the utilities underneath underneath so uh yeah it's something that you need to develop and but it's not a creative typology because uh this kind of idea already exists uh in another form so uh how do you push this further it's something that i'm curious about and then later on and then you Second idea, which is the recycling system, is interesting actually as a utility. Um, yeah, that one I'm looking forward. I think it can generate an idea. Um, clothes lang ba ang recycled? Ano? If ever. Uh, anything uh, may tela. Textile. So, yeah. Textile. Yeah, <laughs> sige. Uh, definitely, um, because... That it involves a lot of process. I mean, how how do you prevent people buying clothes from dead people? <laughs> May mga ganong okay okay na galing pala sa cemetery. Huh? Galing masap tayo yon. Merong ganon. It's either labutan ako dun <laughs> abroad or like that. Uh, is there a process for you to make this better, like being able to wash it first, etc. And then uh, alam mo yon. And then um. Uh, because we don't want it to be just a store that is just second hand you know I've, I've seen a lot of warehouses in Bali we're in it's not really second hand but outdated uh, surfing gears or even clothes by rip curl by ano siya, parang surplus pero makita mo it's really out of style already like 10 years ago but it's still new you know what I mean so it's like, uh, I don't want you guys to create a repository of just old stuff. So how do you take this further? How do you improve it? Um, there's a, a similar pro- parallel topic uh, that uh, Cooks and I w- was we were trying to explore this, but the idea of recycling uh, construction materials. But uh, I don't know if it is applicable in this, in this regard. So... Uh, yeah, I'm curious how you're going to create a process uh, out of this. Is it a business venture? Is it something that will service the, the poor? Uh, like that. Maybe you can have all those programs no, for the poor and something that also sells on a, in, in a uh, cheap price. But uh, I think the idea that I showed, uh, that I suggested earlier about Maybe washing it first, but probably it can be part of the process. Then you create those pools, etc. I don't know. I don't know yet. I'm just exploring. So, uh, yeah. So, you guys, how do you imagine this recycling thing happening or explored, expanding? Uh, actually, sir, major uh, in US, pero we were. Uh, imagining it similar to uh, young artists for in general, like the fabric kind of, it's like a show, parang like we move siya around the building to the different steps of recycling. Pero like I said, if you approach it uh, in a way that uh, you can create programs to make it better, like the washing, etc. Janil doesn't have the washing part. Do you get it? So that informs the building already. So what else can you introduce? I mean, I'm just providing an example. Huh? Uh, I, I know it's good that you have that conscious that you don't want to be too similar, but there are ways to do it because there are elements in Janil's project that this recycling thing won't have, uh, just like the washing thing that I, I talk about. So uh, it's something that uh, you can look into. Yes, sir. Okay, sige. Is that it? Uh, yes, sir. Well, uh, disclaimer lang siguro. This is just amassing. Pero, ayan. 
just to show. Yeah, even family. with massing at this stage, Lance, I expect more. Okay, I want you guys right. to be more conscious of the systems because that effect that affects the those affect the design. Ready? Because remember my criticism on Jaws and Bayes' work on the flyover. Like mm-hmm. it's good because it doesn't have a railing. The moment you put the railings, it's just a typical flyover. Okay, if you don't factor in the other systems, I mean, it will still be like the same banana. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yeah, next. Volunteer. Can we go next? Go. Uh, can we start now, sir? Yeah, yeah, sure. All right. So yes. Um. Well, I started up uh, this week with like kind of doing some research on the area around it, and what I noticed was like the Pasig River actually has a lot of these plants called water hyacinths. So, uh, doing further research upon it, um, we actually determined that it was it's an invasive plant. It's not local to the Philippines, and it yeah it actually takes up a lot of space within the river and. Um, it multiplies really, really fast. In doing so, it actually like chokes the river and like the different water bodies we have in the Philippines, and it even like inhibits the growth and development of other plant life within the area. So uh, we've seen that the Philippines actually have had systems in place or to or like, programs to try and combat this. Um, but yeah, like the efforts haven't really gone so well. It's been um, from what I'm not. If I'm not mistaken, actually, it's an invasive species in the whole world, actually. And like there was a research done on it. And considering or combining the amount spent on like every country trying to eradicate this plant in their areas, since 1990, they spent I think a total of 11 billion US dollars only to achieve like very little success. So yeah. Oh we wanted to do something about this plant, like like in small amounts, but like uh, continuously. So um, we're connecting actually two of our structures with the idea of using these water hyacinths. So one of them is our church area, but then that I'll explain uh, in a bit. And then the other one, sir, uh, just for uh, disclaimer, we haven't like talked about yet. It's still like in the, we're gonna develop it in one of the other typologies, but, in, but yeah, so we wanted to find a way to make that actually helpful to the environment or helpful to the community in itself. So we came up with the idea of our church being a recycling center or community area. And we actually narrowed it down to the idea of composting. So this is the Bokashi composting method. It's a Japanese method of composting. It's very low maintenance. Um, it's actually like possible to do by anyone. Like it doesn't need a lot of like training or materials in doing it, but it's an anaerobic process, meaning it doesn't need like a lot of air it's usually just seal it in a in a bin and you let it compost on its own like over time so this turns food waste and even the hyacinth so we're gonna turn like the organic uh, scrap from the community like their food waste into into compost to maybe like help the um propagation of future produce and vegetables to give back to the community so here um we kind of this shows how like we want to what you want our structure or our site to uh, create our produce to help the community because yeah given that um this is our fabric building this is a church and community center we wanted to find a way that to give everyone like um means or like function within the site while also like having it be able to give back to the community in whole so the composting process within the site it's mainly uh, waste collection and sorting, uh, composting, farming, and even produce selling. So yeah, as I said, this creates activity for interaction, uh, gives back to the community, and addresses the water hyacinth infestation within the site. And then like, we also wanted to uh, like catalog, I guess, the different spaces within the church. So uh, we did a bit of research on like different floor plans. And like I even asked my brother, he's a server at our local church, so I asked them like, what are the different spaces that maybe the average churchgoer wouldn't notice? 
um, because yeah, um, there always are those internal functions within every structure. So from what we got, um, churches are actually even residencies actually for these pre uh, for the preachers for the uh, priests as well as like other church admins. So there's a main church, a smaller chapel, a confessional, uh, a baptism space, conference rooms, storage for and backstage space. Um, this is for the altar boys or like, people that help out the priest to be able to go in and around the site without distracting the mass processions. And then, yeah, a uh, priest residency, so area for them to reside in first. So we kind of uh, combine them into three main ideas that we need or three main spaces. So the main church, um, smaller church functions and the priest residencies. And then we're also looking into possible like features within churches that we want to include in designing that would possibly even help us with our composting. So we're looking at the use of um, lighting and like dynamic versus ambient lighting. So we'll be using a lot of like direct lighting to highlight um, the the altar or even the tabernacle behind the priest where the host is being held. So this gives it a more angelic or like uh, grand feeling while the rest of the site contrasts or the rest of the church would contrast using softer, more ambient lighting that would help out or like would provide more comfort for the people in general. And then the use of these high ceilings would actually help out in yeah balancing the light around the area and creating the feeling of like being in a church because in church design from what we learned I think in historic before um especially in cathedrals they actually use high ceilings to emphasize the idea of like this is supposed to be um where God resides so above us which is why they also like paint their ceilings with like these murals and stuff like that so uh here we also just wanted to show our site and like the different like Things we want to consider so this entire area is our site we don't have to use them on the entire space but we'll we'll be scaling it to a more pedestrian friendly or like um uh, yeah more human-centric scale to better fit people and then this is just the solar path analysis and then here this is just like really quick to show you um this is where pedestrian access was mainly going to come from so from the front and then a lot of like wind will Will probably be coming from here from the riverside so we want to consider that as well as like these are also like very helpful in yeah like the composting as well like the natural elements that are needed for plants to grow so this is how we wanted to we we started with bubble diagrams to kind of show how um, both typologies would kind of intersect with each other and how they would work because we thought of the community center or the composting idea as an amplifier for the church because um one thing i've seen is that um, i'm sure in other churches as well but like after mass the priest will always ask na, oh if you guys have time um maybe, or if you'd like you can help us around or you can join us after for like a short talk or uh, like more preaches or even like these community activities that promote charity and give back to the community as well so we thought of this as a way for the people to bond and create their relations while also giving back to the area that they reside in and then we also wanted to break down the spaces further into what we saw Kanina into like the needed spaces. So we divided it like this is the elevation view. So we we put all the public spaces on the ground floor, so it would be more open and inviting and easier for people to get to. While the private spaces would be up top. This would be more so for yeah the church admins or the people coming from mass or who want to help out with the charity. So these people can freely roam the second or the higher floors without having to like bother too many people at the bottom. And then this is the top view. So just to show now, yeah, the main church, uh, we'll have like a small vegetable garden or farm on, up top. And then we're putting all the functions here in the center to, because we wanted the priests to actually be the ones to um, facilitate or even guide the people in the, the composting process, or even like down here in the first floor, where the plaza and church functions are. So this would be where the confessionals are, the baptism spaces, and even like an open plaza for a farmer's market. That way like they can sell the produce that they grow in the site and give back to the community, like in terms of the uh, vegetables or even um, the profits that they earn for it can be given back to charity. 
and then this is just like uh, we just turned it into a form basically like this is just rough iteration of how we wanted to interact with each other so yeah like um, it's all here naman same thing as the bubble diagram and this one here is just like another view another angle of it so it's not too obvious here sir pero these um, these roof are actually sloped slightly because we wanted to emphasize the idea of getting natural light and elements into it to not just help out the pro the composting side of it, but also to yeah make it a lot more tropical in design and uh, provide that thermal comfort and um, ease of like yeah natural resources within the site for the people as well. So we also created like just sample elevations of how we envision the space would work with itself. So this is the church side of it. Um, we're still gonna further develop the different areas and create features that would help it to really for, um, enforce the idea of composting. But we, we just wanted to show like how it would work. So we'd have like balconies up here on top that would help you transition from the church to the garden up top. And then like you'd also have these private spaces back here, which allow the altar boys or church admins to um, pass in and around the site without like bothering the main um, area. And this would lead to the other areas around the site, leading to the priestly residences here at the back and such. And then this is the front view. So this is the church area here that you saw in the last slide. And this is the central functions that uh, overlap both uses. And then, yeah, but down here would be the waste sorting and, and the uh, plaza for the farmer's market. So you put it here and like that way it's open to everyone, it's easy to access. And actually if you go here, yeah, so actually no, I'll show it in the here. So this is the main church itself and then the plaza would be here and the waste sorting here. So we did it in a way that it opens up these areas here in front so that people can pass through or go directly to the community functions without going to the church if they need to or if they aren't particularly part of the faith. So they can still kind of contribute to the community aspect of it. And then, yeah, we also provided like spaces like a garden. So we're gonna put here like um, different areas for the priests as well to have their personal chapel or their personal like uh, prayers and such without bothering the people while also like um, giving more uh, environments or experiences for the people to kind of go around. So yeah, that's our fabric. But then I, here, Jazz. Um. Okay. Hello. Um. <clears throat> oh wait. Hi ah, there. Um. So just to add on a little on what Carla said. Um. As you can see, sir. Like oh. Uh, most of the things that we've made um, are really kind of like community-centered, community interaction uh, design, because uh, we really wanted um, the community involvement to expose their lifestyle through the architecture that we will make. So um, just to go back to our solid city concept as a multi-generational city, um, kind of like bringing back the romantic aesthetic of the city while enforcing familial ties of the Filipino culture. So for a residential, um, the typology that uh, we have chosen is an elderly um, housing slash kindergarten. Um, so yeah, just a narrative on um, our residential um, choice. Uh, behind all this is a motivation to address uh, problems that are arising due to uh, isolation, especially due to the pandemic. Uh, which affects all ages that have great specific impacts on older people and also different spe spe specific impacts on younger people. Uh, based on our research, to go back a little, uh, that we have presented last week and our new findings all throughout the week, uh, there's a certain amount of elderly that lives alone and they have the risk of going into accidents and having little to no one to be of help to them when they experience those. And um, lonely people are twice as likely to develop Alzheimer's. Um, there's also an increase of mental is health issues among younger people. And as time progresses, the amount of elderly and children rises, obviously. And if you think of the societal cost for all that, it's quite enormous, even just for one city. 
Um, this is one of the reasons why we wanted to tackle this typology and elderly housing slash kindergarten um, to provide for um, kind of like the vulnerable age group of the city. Um, so yeah, here is the site um, where it's in the residential residential zone. Saharap lang siya ng church composting center that Carlos has um, explained. Um, so as you can see, sir, the one on the red, uh, the site, it has it's 18 meters by 30. It's quite big. Um, um, yung orange naman. Uh, we are thinking, sir, possibly that maybe we can provide like a design uh, that could be kind of like copied lang um, to four different sites. But that's just a like an asterisk. Hindi pa kami sure dun because we're developing a design um for the main site. But yeah. Uh, again, our typologies in elderly housing and a kinder, uh, kindergarten. So what I'm going to talk about, sir, is quite on a more conceptual level in response to our research for this typology. Um, can you go next, Carlos? Um, so at the basic level, we have concluded, sir, that uh, the answer to what we want to make um, to redevelop uh, intergenerational housing um, lies in this um, diagram that we have, a simple diagram that we have created. And these three intersecting areas that intersect in our chosen typology that we will design in a social based type of way. Um, we kind of like narrowed down, um, like for the elderly, they need a sense of purpose. And for the children, uh, they need a sense of belongingness. And um, both of those with the design um, will interact with the social benefit um, this is quite community-centered, as said earlier. Um, so we have this culture just to... Um, we have this culture in our, in as Filipinos that we, we take care of our extended family, our lolas and lola. Um, it's, in our, it's in our blood. Um, so what we want to do is kind of like create, um, cater to that uh, or innovate that. Um, expose that type of lifestyle in our architecture. Question is that, question that is in our minds right now is that can we develop an architecture that can promote an independent lifestyle? And yet um, the users of that place would benefit from each other's um, skills, knowledge, uh, different characteristics, needs, or culture. Um, so what we did was we kind of gathered um, case studies so that so ju just so we could uh, understand more of like ano yung mga current um, works na current processes current um, design that have been um, so we're just gonna run through that um, can you go next Carlos ah oh, yeah so here uh, the linear park in London um, it's basically a um, a city garden sensory park a uh, sensory garden um so we have a little diagram on the bottom right um basically this this garden is kind of like powered by uh, kind of like manned by this uh, firm matter architecture and uh, the artist lucy harrison so what we wanted to like uh, what we learned from this um case study is basically um to power something like this or to develop something like this uh, you would really need community involvement um may it be um those people are paid or voluntary um community gardening is one of our kind of like main concepts um that will, we feel like will be shown in the urban fabric of our city because uh, as also explained earlier in our church composting we would have a community farm where um, residents would benefit from that and also this. Um, so yeah, next, Carlos. Uh, so this is the Dallasland Eastern Curve and also, uh, also in London, UK. It's a free to enter uh, neighborhood garden, open in 2010. Pa. Uh, it was built on an old railway line. So parang, um, Redeveloped lang yung area. It acts as a community garden um, with a year round education program. Um, volunteers help to run the garden and plants, herbs, and vegetables, and all of that. 
Um, all of the plants here are wildlife uh, friendly and aim to increase the biodiversity in the area. Um, what we learned from this is basically um, the program that we will, if we're going to create something like this, the program that we will kind of create should kind of um, make the whole area um, self-sufficient or so, um, so it could support itself, uh, kind of like generate income. Um, so yeah, it's also, um, yeah, self-funded is the term, uh, a community garden. And yeah, it depends on local volunteers, my employees and my volunteers, and just like the last guard that pre the last garden that as explained earlier. Uh, next, Carlos. Uh, so now um, we moved into our case studies on uh, housing, uh, affordable housing in New York, which is the Sugar Hill housing. This housing is, uh, it contains a community art gallery in the Children's Museum of Art and Storytelling. Um, what this contributes to our studies is basically we could, uh, we were thinking of, since we had a, we have a kindergarten, um, it is beneficial to the community or to the society as a young, young kids, uh, it will kind of promote um, education in a way, um, especially for those um, unsupported children of poverty in our area, kind of like giving back to the community. Um, so um, these case studies, uh, we're kind of studying their program, not so much in their architecture yet, but uh, next slide. Um, so here in uh, the Dominic in New York also, um, this one is a residence designed for low income seniors. Um, many of whom have history of chronic homelessness. Um, this housing management um, yung gusto lang namin ipakita dito or to highlight is how the common room or the social services room are, was created successfully for them um, to, to just, you know, have that kind of lifestyle where they could um, dine in together. Um, this um, case study, walang involvement yung children. So we just wanted to understand um, like a simple basic uh, spatial zoning of this uh, case study as seen on the top left. Um, it's all directed to the common room. Um, but yeah, this is something that we will improve on for sure. Something just uh, parang, uh, we will develop more, innovate more as said earlier. Can you go next slide? Oh, so lastly, for that's for the case study, uh, the Sandstone Sandstone in a city garden in Rotterdam. Um, just to run through this, um, basically the 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 housing project in Rotterdam, this one, um, their balconies, housing blocks are accompanied by balconies uh, as like a commun communal transition spaces between the dwellings and the collective area. Uh, they have become extension to the indoor living spaces, kind of like kind of like place with the interiority aspect of the design, uh, something that we also wanted to um, consider when we create iterations of for the elderly housing in the kindergarten. So with all this, sir, um, we have created some kind of um, design principles uh, that we wanted to consider. So just so we could compile it in a more organized way, we categorize them. Oh, next slide, Carlos, please. Oh uh, yeah. Um, thinking about all these, we've developed the design principles. Uh, this set of principles are somewhat general to all type of architecture. Of course, we have to think of the location, the configuration of a building, and the typology and um, the design for the building management. Um, the point of this, why we have created this, uh, is to take on a special significance because they enable the that social exchange from elderly and children that we are aiming for. 
um, to promote intergenerational connection. Um, then with, with this, we've narrowed it down to create a design plan down to a brief with different functions and objectives, which is on the next slide. Um, so yeah, first we wanted to categorize them in such a way that our goals, we know that our goals would have a long-term and short-term outcomes. And throughout the design process that we are going to do palang, um, we wanted to, this is basically the final form of kind of like our mind map. Um, uh, our goals are basically to improve their well-being and then Im improve the, the neighborhood's well-being, the, um, the local economy with um, the function, the different programs and functions that we plan on putting in the elderly housing in kindergarten. And if you look at it in a holistic aspect, um, yeah, to create intergenerational connections. And uh, we, yeah, as mentioned, we categorize it to medium to long-term outcomes and to short-term outcomes. Um, these are all kind of like um, considered in a way that we will focus more on the long-term outcomes, but not not to mention, uh, not we're not saying that uh, we are going to disregard the short-term outcomes. We just wanted to um, organize it and to form a brief uh, that we will hold on to, stick to as we start creating uh, the iterations. Um, so for, yeah, our next step for this building, sir, would be focused more on the translation part um, of all this to an excuse or a party for different functions you ought to put uh, to somewhat create a system design that um, we have much yet to learn. But yeah, that's just for the long story yung meron kami for the elderly, the next, the, the second typology. That's it, sir. Okay, sige. Um, all right, uh, you had a beautiful presentation, uh, but I think it's high time so that we don't waste time. Uh, maybe I'll just ask each pair if they are pushing for an explorative uh, design or pragmatic design. So I'm going to put you in that uh, situation wherein you need to establish this early if uh, what you want is pragmatic, innovation, or explorative. Are you asking us? Like we're gonna. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I am. Oh. I am. Uh, walang ano? Walang ano? Walang uh, walang better dun sa dalawa. It's just that uh, para lang. I want you guys to be ganado with uh, with your work, and if you you know if it's if uh, exploration doesn't suit you, you know, din natin siya push. And uh, if, if you're more comfortable with the uh, a pragmatic innovation will push for that so that uh, you guys can be more into it. This goes for uh, the previous groups, um, Antea and who's that again? Justin, like that. But uh, uh, and yeah, so, but if you are, if you decide to be explorative, uh, there are different, there's, there's a different uh, way to approach it. Okay, so uh, maybe don't decide now, uh, but, but right now, this is more pragmatic innovation. Uh, the one that Joanna did earlier, more of uh, pragmatic innovation as well. Uh, because ang exploration kasi, ang goal is to... Um, find an architecture that is not being done before. Uh, while you guys are, I know when we're talking about, you know, um, uh, a creative typology, we're not just talking about the uses, we're talking about the environment itself. Like all of them are stitched together. The program, how people live, how people use it, 
plus the architectural envelope, how it functions, they're all uh, interrelated. Uh, with this kind of uh, presentation, uh, I can already picture it towards the end. Um, I mean, especially for the intergenerational thing, uh, uh, that it's going to be more pragmatic innovation, meaning, um, yeah, you will create a beautiful building, but it's not really that creative because uh, uh, the only thing that will make it stand out is probably when you look at the floor plan because you have different uses, but it doesn't really affect how people are experiencing the building. So uh, it will because of the, I know, because of the, uh, of the envelope, but um, in creating a new environment is not there. Um, I don't think that will result to it. Yung sa, just to clarify lang, this goes for everyone. Yung tinawa ni Carlos Buen Camino na, na highest sent something, it's a goal. Yung sab, yung, it's not really a fabric building if it's going to be a special building because you need to imagine the fabric building to be applicable. Like it's the DNA of all the typologies in the city. Like even though they may not have the 100% of the highest idea, kunyari lang may water highest sent yung building, uh, Siyempre din mo lahat ng building magkakaganon, may certain influence lang. So, ayun. Eh, ayun, so you need to decide. So again, para lang, ano, para lang, uh, baka kasi mamaya, bawal lang kayo ng gana if uh, I'm expecting something that uh, you are not familiar with. But if you are willing to take the challenge and willing to take hard criticism, uh, towards the work ah, and uh, how you approach it na hindi kayo ma 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 hurt <laughs> so yun exploration pwede uh, kasi syempre kailangan ko maging honest and sometimes the truth can hurt no um pag nag nang ano pag nag criticize ako so uh, ayun but this one walang mali dito don't get me wrong carlos uh, and ano and eron ha i'm just saying that uh, this form of study leads towards uh, pragmatic innovation. Yung katulad nung kanina sa Water Hyacinth, talking about the church, uh, although I said that the silly in the formula that you have to start with the floor plan, you start with the way with the form, it's something that it's good that you are already exploring. Somehow you, that, uh, you can already review the, towards the end. Uh, but normally in the explorative format, you're studying the Water Hyacinth, how you're going to use it, or how you're going to stop from ano, infesting the the what the Pasig River? What tools can you use? How can architecture be used to stop it from uh, uh, yeah from from spreading? They get it. So it's all about the unknown with creative exploration. So, marami talagang commitment and immersion na kailang mayare. And when I say immersion, kailang mo drawing. Wala naman ako doubt kasi impressive naman yung yung submission yung today, Carlos and ano. And uh, Aaron and I'm I'm I can see the devotion to the work and the study, and you are really invested in it. I have to give you that. So, uh, but I'm just basically describing the type of study that you are are providing, which is actually good. And uh, I'm all also curious how this will turn out. Uh, do you guys follow somehow? Uh, yes, sir. We do. But like, uh, so just to clarify, like, uh, or at least, you know, uh, we wanted to like, uh, we'll, we'll be still be changing a lot of the form, like the form and like uh, programs of the space we did is purely just to show how it's going to work, like in terms of the features pa and like the individual like um, highlights of each portion are still going to be developed. So like we have that idea now of how we're going to do it, but we're still going to okay. like focus on Including but, uh, I'm happy to hear that, but just the same, I'm giving this option for everyone because I, I want to be more focused on the development of the student. Uh, although I know that the studio is really known for the explorative type. And I'm happy that somehow you guys know where to position yourself, that you know it starts with that, being honest with yourself. And if you're willing to push for that, you, you actually have the the basic ingredients. Kasi ang explorative naman is, is still grounded on reality and you start with the basic. Kasama dyan yung innovation. Kumbaga ang explorative is innovation 
on steroids or on another level. You get it? So uh, you need to know these things. Like I said, wala namang formula yan. So kasama dyan yung knowing the basics first, like providing these case studies, which are good, no? Uh, pero syempre kasi dahil, siguro dahil ano, dahil alam ko na hinahanap ko, so parang uh, sometimes nasa habit ko subconsciously na hanapin agad yung architectural and drawing. Kaya I apologize for the previous group kung yun kagad ang hinahanap ko. I'm not saying that, you know, this kind of studies are not right. Ha? So, you know, in thesis, you are going to provide these case studies pa rin. And uh, si Lamak naman, dumiretso sa drawing, kaso kinulang naman ng application. So, bitin, di ba? So, uh, ayun. So, I, but uh, I'm happy with this presentation. There's really nothing wrong with it. It's all impressive. I'm ha- I, Kudos to, to your previous mentors who taught you this process. Uh, but, you know, I, I really hope. But you guys can still decide. No, But, uh, But it's good that you know this. It's a stepping stone uh, towards the creative exploration. Uh, creative exploration. Okay. Wait, yes. Can I ask something? Sure. Uh, sir, when you say it like that, it's not. I don't know if I'll sound stupid with this, sir. But no, it's okay. When you stupid. <laughs> when you say it like that, sir, when you make us choose between uh, exploration or pragmatic innovation, parang with all the six buildings, it has to be one. It can't be like. Three innovation, then three. Ah, sige, pwede. I'm open to that. Pwede naman. Oh, pwede okay. niya. At least pwede itry sa isang building kung gusto niyo. Alam niyo. Kasi exhausting ang creative exploration eh. Although hindi ko ya allow sa mga veterano dito ha. So lang, hindi pwede. Okay, oh, hindi pwede. Diyan yan, hindi pwede. No, no. wag yung sayangin yung time. Pero pati ganyan. Okay, game. Gagapang na kami. <laughs> Kaya nyo yan. Actually, naano ko lang, I'm just adjusting to the new guys. So, kaya nyo yan. Try na kayo sa ganyan. They adjust to us. <laughs> oh, kaya nyo yan. <laughs> okay. Uh, sir, another question. Yeah, sir. Sir. No, wala um, mo. Sige lang. Okay, sige. <laughs> sir, yung um, term nyo with the plantita, plantita, that's considered as exploration. Actually, uh, yes, it's it's a creative exploration already because everything was based on the idea. If you notice yung building ni Janil, hindi mo naman siya makikita kahit saan eh. Oh. They get it? Okay. So, so basically, nag-start kasi siya sa idea. Yung abaka plant. Siyempre, iba right, de- debatable, no? Debatable yung iba. Kasi, uh, hindi ko pa siya na, masyadong napupush din. But, uh, It's, it's the same thing with the other. Si Tracy kasi maraming plants, pero at least still boils down to planting or agriculture. So wala naman siya specific, pero kasi she was able to present something that is well-connected or in the process is actually very clear. And uh, she was able to change the column into something very useful like uh, a funneling system for the water, drain water. So it's a, the, the, the church that she created is a, a system that is very functional. I don't know if you saw that or we was able to uh, distinguish that. Okay, yung kay, 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 ano, kay uh, uh, Fabico, medyo bordering pragmatic innovation exploration. Ayun. Uh, ano pa ba? Pinaka-best talaga yung kay Janil, eh, kasi you can really see the, the morphology, the people, how people are are experiencing the building, how people are working. Because the different levels involves the process. Uh, although hindi ko na matandaan masyado, pero syempre may ere doon na nag sila, may ere doon na naglalabas sila, nakasampay. So saan mo ilalagay itong mga to sa different levels? Iba? So dinesign ni Janil yun based on the process of uh, the abaka weaving. Do you get it? So based on that mm. process of making abaka weaving, yun na nag-dictate sa form ng building. Kasi syempre, you're also using gravity. Di ba? Kung pa, yung si K-Mac, may ginawa siya na yung, uh, yung pwedeng ibaksak yung mga dahon para hindi na kailangan buhatin. So in a way, gagawa siya ng receptacle na binabaksak lang doon yung na, she, na he, you just drop the the dried leaves para sa ground floor so that you don't have to carry it all the way down. So in a way, part na architecture yung spectacle na may bumabaksak ng mga dahon. Alam mo yun, part siya na experience. So you, you, you make that expi- spectacle. So kumbaga parang may fireworks pag New Year, eto, 
yung kung anong nangyayari doon sa bill, whatever is happening in the bill, it's part of that. Uh, siguro sa, sa conventional, how it translates, yung BMW building ni, ni Zaha did, makita mo sa opisina, sa pab- pabrika nila, na while you are working, you can see all the parts on a conveyor belt around you. You are being surrounded by the process of how to make a BMW car. So in a way, magagamit ng mga ideas na to later on, maybe in different manners or different approaches. But right now, we are doing the most ideal process because we are in an academic setting. Yes, sir. Okay. So, thank you, sir. all right. Thank you, guys. Uh, next. Thank you, sir. Sir, can me and Janelle go next? Okay, cool. Hello. Hello. Here, can you go to the other sheet? Okay. Rice. Yeah, there. Okay. Ah. The one before that. Yeah. Yeah. The one before this one. Okay. So for this week, we decided to research more on which plants we want to propagate in our fabric building, which is our mosque. So uh, we chose the rice plant because um, we decided to focus on Philippine, uh, main Philippine crops um, that are grown the most and our uh, foundational crops, as well as um, halal approved um foods so as well as um acknowledging that these this rice plant would generate a lot of waste which we could explore and that it has potential to grow in water and it's very quick to grow um so yeah this is mainly just research for us thank you tracy for sharing your rice resource documents um yeah this is just basic information that we will explore in the creation of our form and program so height and um sun properties and the fact that the rice plant could grow um it's a semi-aquatic plant so it grows mainly in uh moist soil or submerged in water and it's very fast to grow around three to four months only next slide okay so this is the general process of harvesting to the creation of rice uh, grain that we eat today so from harvest there um, it goes through the process of drying then milling till we have white rice and the byproducts that are generated are rice straw, husk, and bran, which um, we're planning to explore and incorporate into our agriculture if um, in the future. So these processes we're also um, will be taking note to apply into our building program. Next slide. Oh, the the first one you showed, pala, the aqu- aquaponic. Okay, so. Um, since we're focusing on water and agriculture in our um, the fabric of our city is water and agriculture so it's very um, I think uh, timely to use the aquaponic system as a means for um, our agricultural system within our building so, this is just a general diagram that we're planning to incorporate into our building. And we placed a picture of the, um, the aquaponic system in a natural pond um, sense since we're planning to sort of integrate water into the structure in a more like 
uh, water flow seamless sense like um, indoor rivers and stuff. So um, it's a good basis for that. And we also found that um, other elements such as water lilies and tilapias are, uh, they work together seamlessly with this system. So it will also, um, water lilies help in the uh, cleaning and filtering of the water while tilapias are, um, it fits within the same environment as how um, the rice plants grow. And um, it's also uh, halal approved. So yeah, next slide here. Okay, so this is just an updated uh, diagram of what we presented last week um, with how the different elements of how we want our building fabric to look like. So we just um, decided that our form would be terrace form for our mosque and that uh, we'll be incorporating our Kapi's Mashrabia water catchment air well system into the minaret and an aquaponics system for the rice which we'll be explaining in our massing later. Next. Go here. <laughs> so for the massing, we just started with the, um, not necessarily the shape that we wanted, but more of how we wanted to organize the space. So we took into consideration um, the orientation that would be needed because um, we know that um, it's common for mosques to face um, Mecca. So we um, designed the, uh, we initially designed it in a way where uh, the prayer rooms are towards the left side, which um, corresponds to the orientation of Mecca um, based on the angle of the location of our mosques in the plants. Um, we wanted to incorporate the use of uh, we wanted to incorporate the use of the roofs as a rice paddy aquaponic system since we felt that um, the open space would um, be conducive for uh, the growth of rice and uh, the general shape of the terracing um, would also allow us to um, use the existing water not only for the rice but um with proper filtration also for um the process of ablution ablution or yeah. the uh the washing of the feet and um the washing of the uh, of that's part of the muslim culture when they uh, go to pray or go to the mosque. So another aspect that we want to incorporate is uh, we found a study where it stated how um, halal is not necessarily, like there's no def definite this definition for halal. So halal is really dependent on the person who, who has the beliefs. But it's more common than not that the halal belief of a community is dependent and reliant on the mosque and the people who serve in the mosque. So um, with that in mind, we sort of wanted to incorporate a kitchen or a food bank where um, we could first explore the connection uh, between halal food and the mosque. So part of this food bank would be um, a kitchen and processing area where um, they would be able to collect the rice from the rice paddy rooftops and then use the um, whatever they collected to um, provide food for food banks and or dining areas um, that are connected to the mosque. Um, we also wanted to incorporate um, a a school where halal um, foods are taught, like uh, people are taught how to cook halal foods. 
um, which then can be further donated to the food banks or the dining areas. So we wanted to incorporate um, children and teenagers, especially within the community, so that um, it would serve as another form of connection to um, not only the religious aspect, which is the mosque, but also as a form of um, being connected to health and healthy habits. Mm. Oh, um, I would just like to mention the minaret as well, because we we had research last week about the air well and how it's a good um, water catchment system based on um, winds. Um, so we decided since it's part of uh, our potential fabric building, we would want to incorporate into the minaret for this uh, mosque since it, we found different studies on how minarets have good uh, vent passive ventilation systems and how its height could affect the way water could be um, caught. So we'll be studying that for next week also and applying it to this. And with that air well, it will be connecting to the different uh, waterscapes within this area. For example, our pond in the bottom um, that surrounds our structure as well as the paddy terraces to uh, irrigate the rice and um, water flow uh, in the facade of the building and potentially um, also serving, like being utilized for the ab ablution inside where they wash um, their feet. And so, yeah, um, that's how we'll be incorporating water into the system and Sorry, go back. The massing. Yeah, sorry. Okay. So the other than that, we're still this is just a general massing with like the program of our spacing, but we'll still be incorporating the terracing to uh, finding a more effective way to terrace um our areas, especially the food bank, to make it more dynamic and make the water flow easier and more effectively. Um, other than that, we'll also be trying to explore more agricultural systems to incorporate within the program. Okay, next. Yeah. Okay, so other than that, this is just a study we found, uh, a case study pala of um, a mosque in Jakarta. Uh, which is one of the biggest mosques in Southeast Asia, which holds um, a kitchen to serve during Ramadan, uh, to serve food during Ramadan, uh, especially when there are a lot of people. Uh, since we wanted to research out whether or not it is feasible to combine the program of the mosque and uh, a food program, so this is one of the studies we found. And um, as you can see, the article stated that because of the heat and the number of people, the quality of service is very oppressive in the environment. With, um, yeah, I think it's very evident in the picture. So um, in a way, our structure would sort of uh, try to solve this problem and providing a more cohesive and uh, more appropriate environment especially since halal is a very important culture, uh, but provide a more, like a better environment in general, especially by um, making them co, co live together with um, the plants and the water. So um, this uh, another uh, article we found is how uh, there's this mosque that, uh, uh, the the head of the mosque provided uh, plants within the mosque for children to come and uh, sort the children are motivated to come and like have their own plant for themselves. They get to name their own plant and water their own plant. So it's sort of an initiative for them to also um, 
visit the mosque often. So this is sort of like a basis for the program in our structure also, just to get the narrative going. Yeah, uh, to add to that, um, we've also found that mosques have certain uh, rituals where there are people who uh, live in the mosque and the community gathers to provide for their needs during the time, like the time period that they end up having to stay within the mosque area. So um, we wanted to sort of incorporate that idea of community and helping um, the community by combining that. I think that's it. Um, one of our uh, problems, <laughs> issues lang at the moment is uh, we're struggling to find uh, resources on whether or not plants could be incorporated into the prayer rooms or the different area spaces. We're trying to mm -hmm. find the like, proof long on whether it is possible since it's a matter of distraction for them usually. Yeah. So yeah, we're still exploring that part. But other than that, this is the general massing that we have. Yeah. That's, that's all I think. That's it. So, so basically what you have now is for the most noise, which is a public building, right? Yes, sir. So the way I imagine this is that you will have a water collection and then probably, um, wait lang, huh? you are going to explore how all of these systems interact with one another with the function, with the main function of the mosque, right? And then you yes, have, sir. Then you have the you know food uh, supply, etc. So okay, I'm, I think... Uh, yeah, that, that sounds cool, actually. So uh, I'm curious how this is going to be developed later on. All right. So this is just a general massing, right? Yes, yes sir. sir. We're going to explore the terracing. Okay. Yes, sir. Good. We just wanted to show like how the areas were supposed... We were thinking of how to connect the different areas. Okay. So, okay. How about, so you have a type of, one typology for this week, no? Yeah. Uh yeah, sir. Uh just to add, sir, for the okay. So um, like you're saying, how the rice has certain byproducts. So we were also um thinking of how these byproducts could be utilized for um ag as agri waste, which was our plan for the our utilities. Agri waste. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, uh, sir. So you can do that. Siguro ano lang, since you guys are familiar with the process, um, at least for the veterano na, no, kasi baka maliti iba eh, na bago. Uh, if the idea that you have is enough to change the typology, uh, you don't need to add more, no? Uh, baka kasi mamaya, uh, it's too much, it's not practical anymore. At the same time, uh, it becomes questionable. Kasi you're talking about ano rin, eh, supply and then the number of yields you need to meet. But... Uh, I think this is more doable than you know creating you know than you know adding more ideas and then it be becomes over design right so uh, but if the idea is all about you know addressing current issues we're, we welcome that kunyari waste management or uh, how are we going to treat uh, wastewater etc in this kind of uh, typology in this kind of a uh, project you know okay pa yon pero kung kunyari uh, ito linter it will introduce another uh, program that will complicate further. Uh, yun, baka we need to curate it later on. All right? Yung tingo tamang, okay. tamang exploration ginawa ni Gijanil with the, with the Abaka weaving project last time. So it's, it's, it's not over-explored. You get it? You get it? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Oh, yun? Yes, okay. sir. I think you get it naman. Sige. Okay, so uh, I guess I look forward to next week and try to explore a fabric building because this is not a fabric. Eh. A fabric is something that you will see around that will dictate the context. Just like when you go to Miami, you know, it's Art Deco. That's the fabric. So, uh, and then when you go to Santorini, it's all white and blue uh, roof, whitewash walls. You know, you already distinguish that you are in that city. 
So uh, if it's a main building, because they have the option not to be uh, the same as the others. Well, maganda mayroong konting influence, right? So uh, just like how you see medieval towns, we're in you know the only thing that makes the main building or the striking uh, building differ is the, the 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 scale and the design, how ornate it is. But the materials are still locally sourced and similar with the fabric. Uh, Uh, town buildings or houses, okay. So, sir, do you mean like um apply it to a building that's more common within the area? Yes, like yes. not a landmark building. Oh, okay. yeah. oh. buildings like a <laughs> common building, like the DNA. That's why I kept okay. I kept talking about oh, okay. what's the DNA. Yun. Okay, so okay. ideally, sure, magaling din siya sa creative exploration para yeah. okay. Okay, sir. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, bye. Thank What's you, next? sir. Sir, can I go next? Say so, yeah, go. But uh, sir, uh, we'll ask you Francis because he uh, earlier this week he was vaccinated and now he has a uh, high fever. So it's just me long. Okay, sige, sige. okay. So I'll just present the uh, whatever we have. Kita na, sir? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, so basically for this week, we were focusing on mainly the fabric building. And we, so put our research lang kami, sir. And uh, we didn't really do much in terms of like the forms and the type of the programs. But we had like ideas na at hand. And um, kahit na fabric yung focus naman, we had like other research that could be useful also for the other typologies. So that makes it helpful as well. So for the fabric building, we were also thinking about how our fabric building will represent like the DNA of the whole city. And we thought na, what kind of like, since our urban concept was patchwork, how can we apply like a similar concept to the building? So we've thought of um, how why don't we just integrate like the similarities between different communities. So so far, the communities that we um, picked from the, yung, from Arctis 5, Yeah, urban planning was four communities. So that's the working, the Catholic, the Muslim, and the youth community, which are the kids. The the working because we have like corporate buildings and the youth community because we place also like institutions nearby the mosque. Um, and for the Catholic and Muslim community, since both of these are like um religious communities, but they have different beliefs, you wanted um uh, all these four uh, communities to somewhat communicate within that fabric. Because one of our goals um, for the city is like we didn't really want a division in class, like how people feel that other classes are superior, inferior to others. So um, we focused on like what makes a community comfortable in terms of like space or like ergonomics, proxemics, stuff like that. And what can the similarities between them, how can we like combine a community so that they can communicate more and socialize more. So um, I, I forgot to mention, sir, for this week, we didn't really, we didn't include the research on Catholic communities. Pa. We were hoping to do that for next week. So what we have right now is like ideas for the working Muslim and the youth community. So for the working community, um, there are actually a lot of, we consider like our corporate, but there are actually a lot of um. Uh, types of corporates. So I considered three based on like the product tiles. So the first corporate type that I considered was the manufacturing since they deal with larger products. So what strategy that they use to like for corporate, how they manage like ergonomics between within their manufacturing company is one for like the Volvo corporation, they deal with cars. So since cars are like a big product, that requires them like a big room to work on it. And it's very difficult for like the employees to travel from uh, one area to another. So what they actually do is they create teams. And from that teams, they have like their own strategy. But the way they collaborate is mainly from like the, how do you say this? Like you're like the boss, like the leader per team. And from that, the leaders communicate. So that's like one way on how they 
manage spaces despite having despite having big spaces to fix for like big products like ours. And another one is like the construction manufacturing. So they mainly focus on assessment. So like they have like an assessment form that identifies the different risk that a per, uh, that a person has because since you're dealing with construction, it's basically uh, heavy loaded material. So it's more on like physical work. So it's defined by basically samples are like uh, awkward body postures, heavy metal handling, and they deal with it through like an assessment form. So the next type is like electronics. So these are like the medium sized products. So their spaces are, um, it, it can be big or small depending on the product, but um, they focus, the difference between electronics and some manufacturing is that for the manufacturing, most of these strategies are focused mainly on space and like the people, but for like electronics, they add like the equipment, the assessment of the equipment. So this is basically not so useful, but I included it just for a comparison. And the last one's basically office and retail. So these are basically like the finances, not the paperwork. Those that deal with products, but parang internet-based products. So like, you know, sa computer na ilaman. So it's mainly just like the arrangement of spaces. So these are just like standard spaces for different types of rooms. So um, we did this for the corporate ergonomics so that um, since we didn't really... Since we didn't really want like corporate employees to be stuck in their own office, we want them to be more comfortable, to be more socialized. So that was one aspect we had to consider in the community. So aside from the corporate community, we also considered the um, Muslim community on how they design space. Um, so this is basically the design considerations and it was derived from like the Islamic Sharia law. It was like the Vastu Shastra sir, that we did, but that was the Hindu. So this is like how Islam creates space. And um they did the Islam doesn't really have like a certain law when it comes to designing like social spaces. But they had like um Dinaman laws, but interpretations when it comes to designing like residential houses. And since residential houses are like the most comfort zone of like people, we had to research about it in order to understand what makes Islam comfortable in like social spaces as well. So um, there were actually three design principles. So they actually considered um, three design principles. One of them was privacy. So privacy was categorized into like visual, acoustic, and olfactory. So for the visuals, these are actually samples of how the Muslim designed um, spaces. So on the left side, um, based on the research, um, most Muslim entrances, they want it closed off, like away from the neighbors, away from the main street, because um, they wanted like a more trunk, uh, a more peaceful type of home, and they want an organized family structure. So um, they also focus on how they separate rooms, like for example, it's basically parang sound carving din sir, or yeah, understanding the sound path. So most of the code rooms are placed on the south, and most of the kitchens like. Hot areas are placed on the north side where there's not so much sun. And another aspect that they actually do to control the privacy is yung using not so much big windows. So they focus mainly on like small windows or high seat or high windows wherein you can't really you can't really direct, directly visualize the inside of the house. And they also use like courtyards in the middle. The reason for that is not only does it address the climate, but it's also a way for people as they enter the house, not all of the rooms or people on the other side of the courtyard, they're not directly visualized because that would because one of their you know one of their aspects is because they want more um, peace and more structuralized um a structuralized family. So aside from visual privacy, they also have like acoustical privacy. So um I was also able to research that most houses, they have like this separate wall. It's not really um, uh, architecture, I guess it's more of like technical because having like one wall long and let's say you have like a sound outside, it absorbs the wall. So having another type of wall outside absorbs the sound so that the inner side of the wall doesn't really, uh, does it, uh, and doesn't absorb the vibration. 
Tapos, um, for the olfactory, this really this isn't really spatial. They mostly just use um incense to purify yung space. So aside from yung privacy, another aspect to how they design houses was modesty. Modesty or how they call it, I think it's humility, yeah. So one aspect of applying this was um, this is actually a house of Prophet uh, Muhammad in Medina in 623 AD. So the house was actually designed more of a social space. As you can see, um, yung covered area for Prophet's companions was really big because it was applied, it was made just for the people or for his friends. And um, an an another example of external modesty that the Muslims use was basically just using local product as a way to use it as a material for the exterior walls of their houses. While as for internal modesty, most of houses have prayer rooms. So prayer rooms don't read, they actually discourage like if there's too much expensive furniture, they prefer it if it's more, um, how do you say, it's more cleaner. So it's actually required among um, the Muslim, but since we're dealing with the Philippines, it's a different host country. So they might have different beliefs. Um, uh, I think this is the last um, aspect. So the last aspect is basically hospitality. So this is how Muslims deal with hospitality. Since one important factor that Muslims have that are different from other religions is how they segregate gender. So since most families are like patri patriarchic, so it's kind of male-oriented, so this is actually a house in um, Malaysia. So the reason of the public hospitality is because it's referring to the male gender. That's why they have like a big main veranda here. This is mainly for um, the guests, the male guests to entertain other male guests. And for the female owners of the house who entertain other female guests, they usually stay here in this uh, middle area. And um, another way how um, gender was really an important issue for, for Islam is how they segregate yung mga female. So basically, this is a nomadic tent in Iran. So these tents are supposedly um, tents for the female to work while the males work on like the outside, like harvest. So this is how the um, semi-public hospitality because it's only referring to the female, sir. So this is actually one example that we hadn't thought that incorporates the, the corporate area. So this is actually a rug Republic headquarters. It's located in um, India. So um, actually what we had a similar idea with this project was how it had a commercial space and the corporate space, but it was actually, it was actually selling like textiles that were based from since the place was actually an industrial space, so the textiles become a cultural factor. But the thing that we really want to improve on is since we're dealing with a lot of communities, we don't want only like since we have the office, the corporates for utility and maintenance, and the commercial spaces for saleability, we want to include also a space that allows. The, um, the specific communities mentioned to communicate. Um, although, yeah, we're work, we're still working on it on how we um, integrate that with like a commercial space. So, um, aside from that, these are young sheets ni Francis now that I tried to present since he he's um he wasn't able to present today, sir. So, what um you must find a focus ni Francis was like the youth community. Since we sa dun sa may mosque area namin sa 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 may or, uh, San Miguel, we had a lot of like um institutions there that refer to from kindergarten to uh, secondary school. So that's high school, sir. So one thing that we had in mind was like the concept of Angie Play. So this concept was invented by Cheng Xiaoqin. So it deals uh, it actually deals with um kids but the thing that you'd actually find unique is like most of the materials they're not really like new or very playful they're just like picked up materials from 
parang unused materials that they tried to recycle and use it for the kids. So, and um, these five, basically these five, how do you say this? Principles of Angie Play actually reflect to how the kids should envision the place. So, um, according to Francis, the importance of virtual input. So kids learn the fastest when they learn through touch and vision, as we use the multicolored, like multicolored uh, elements of um, that as a way to inform play. Kids could see it as a playground because of the different colors which are present. So um, Francis actually had in mind here of how we can use the utility program as a way of how it would like become playful for the youth community. But um, we're actually trying on how we can integrate this to the fabric uh, building as well. So in a way, it, beca it would become a fabric, um, a fabric building and a utility building at the same time. Uh, so the idea of creating a plant for water treatment and preschool is built upon the premise that kids learn better through the things they see and the things that they get to touch and experience. And so with the colorful environment and the minimally complicated layout of pipes in a water treatment plant, creating a preschool within the fabric of the plant allows the industrial setting of it to be converted into something more lively and educational, erasing the distinction between an industrial space meant for professional adults and an educational space meant for kids. So I think a similar concept with the Pompidou. So the Pompidou is basically a structural building, but because of the colorful and the plainness, it it seemed more like in yung in, internal like spaces niya, it becomes a commercial and a cultural place. So applying, we wanted to apply the same concept, but the community we're dealing with is more of the more of the kids. So that's where our concept changes because aside from the colors, we also want like yung concept of Angie play to be applied to the utility building. So that way it doesn't just become like a black building that's mainly for the utilization of water treatment or water transportation. That way we can still utilize yung, um, the youth community on how they explore design. Um, so uh, that's basically what we have for today's, uh, this week, sir. So basically you're gearing toward pragmatic, right? Um, yeah, almost sort of, but we're still, um, we didn't, we're still exploring under young innovation process. Okay. Since see. we haven't like fully researched about all the communities, these are, I think, mostly surface level. Pa lang. Oh, and then I want you guys to minimize getting case studies like this because uh, you're not really designing yet. Um, uh, doing this, basis, it's all, almost tantamount to copying the ideas. So uh, very, very still line ang, ang difference ng case studies and ano, referencing, okay? Oh yeah, we just put the center here just because we can't really find a certain way to show like yung colorfulness of playground, how we imagined it. Yeah, but you're supposed to be exploring but, puro case studies ang nakita ko ngayon eh. Uh, okay? Okay, sir. Okay. All right. Next. Uh, Idrius, do you want to go next? Um, si ano muna po? Sila ano muna? Idrius, we don't have time to wait because okay, well. after sila Kevin, wala na, we're done na. So it's the same thing. You don't have to, ano? Sige po. Oh. Okay na mahiya. <laughs> Sige po, sir. You can understand. It's a share screen. So, get a voice screen. Yes, kita, kita naman. Gawin mo full screen para mas kita. Wait, pa, paano, paano po mag full screen? Uh, 
Actually, hindi ko rin alam eh. <laughs> Sorry. Speed lang. Speed dive. Tracy, paano ba mag-full screen dito? Uh, maybe F11. Press F11 sa drive na link. Press delete daw. Ano, joke lang. F11. F11. Delete? I moved out. F11. <laughs> F11. Oo. Ayun. Hindi po siya nag-full screen. Oh, okay na yan. Okay na yan. Sige. Ah. Okay na yan. Kita na. Mas kita na. All right. All right. So, so, so this our ano, plan in which we will put our six typologies or especially their locations. For the fabric buildings, we decided to add it in the centerpiece or the part, part circle because Circle Nenos is named after that part. And therefore, it it it'd be best to place a typology in that in that middle prominent portion for the public buildings we decided to add it here in in this area because it will be it will be very close to manila city hall and old gsi gsis building especially that, that there are also underpasses the underpass exits For the commercial buildings, we will plan to place it here in this segment because it, it's surrounded by several parks. So that will be suited into creating additional ideas. For commercial and residential, we added here, here beside the circle because it will able to provide a, a lot of substantial connection regarding these two typologies when they connect each other. For the utilities, utilities, they will be situated like right here. This where it's all we're all about water circulation and water transport system. It should be explained later. And for the landmarks, For the landmarks, it's not yet final, but we will put it here in this segment. So this, so we we observe the daily activities regarding the San Miguel and Ermita. So from what I seen, this this the daily activities. This this ensure that the proposed city can maintain a stable connection and interaction. So they are divided into two. And this the diagram for the food process. It, it it's gonna this this site will focus on harvesting and distributing of food. Let regard with the introduction of plants. So it's our direction, initial direction. So for the let's go to the fabric buildings. For our fabric, we'll we'll use the Balawe Rice Terraces as the starting point, which was created by Ifugo people. We chose that because it it's the symbol of Philippine farm and and also being an intellectual place in the Philippines. It's very prominent and and it has very different production and it's known for its land depth, like um like every everything is has different height from each other. So this is our starting point, and we will im- 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 improvise a form later. So for the falling water, it's it's already everyone's already familiar with that. Yeah. So this, this is the plan of, for the falling water. So, 
we decided that our form will be a very small building that will be placed beside the river. It will be initiated in the river park inside Circle Enos. Inside the river park circle. So, so this is so this the banana rice terraces crop production. These are actually the four common crops in the bale beans, with the rice being the most abundant of all. You can also see the activities regarding the banana rice terraces. And especially what the things they, they accomplish at and what they master easily. Along with rice terraces, it's followed up by corn, coconut, and sugar cane. They, they can also be used to create an architecture based on the resource gathered. So once again, for this fabric building, we, we try to observe the social cultural needs for the Filipinos, especially in Manila. For starting from micro, it, 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 it ties to boil down for individuals, private households, which we plan to be centered in the San Miguel side or the lower class side that we have envisioned going all the way up to the ma macro side which is the ermita side or the higher class side we, we wanted to give the park circle a distribution regarding the two islands an equal priority and equal balance regarding the supply distribution and association they, they can be divided into th three types, namely ideal type, mixed type, and subtype. So, so for the, no wait, b before we proceed to, no, I will show um, typology of the no, fabric. So this is our initial model typology for the fabric. You can see the dark and light green colors. The light green colors indicate other activities, which we will still be specific next week. But the dark green areas, they denote farm areas or crop areas. They will be used to they are used to be planted. So this is our initial morphology of for the river park circle, which is the centerpiece of circle once again. And this and this black box segment, we are planning this to be a, a stop for the boats and and travel point specifically. So this is our morphology. It, from the from the side paths, it, it's gonna extrude all the way up until it reaches into eight meter point. It's eight meters tall elevation. So this is our initial idea. So that's for the fabric. Let's go to public buildings. For our design idea is, is based on starting from inside out house, which was create, which was designed by Takeshi Osaka. We wanted users to be to have a feeling that they, they want to, to be with nature within the structure. It's gonna it will also benefit the government workers so that they're gonna work there every day. 
We also impose bioclimatic design into here, which is important so that we will have any passive cooling and daylighting in the design. It makes the public building more energy efficient given its abundance of people. Also have a lower impact on the environment and create a more comfortable space for the workers and the users. So this is also the inside house floor plan. So, so our plan is to have to have a space that that that's like having a dimension change. When you enter the building, that's already one aspect. And once you enter another room, it feels like you are in different building again. So, so our idea is for that is to give the public building a, a surprising feeling. Therefore, it's going to attack a lot of visitors. So for the utilities so far, we observe the water cycle, which will be used as consideration regarding the water-based segment of utilities. This all the this all due to the fact that there are there are a lot of this in, in this area and Pasig River is being used as a beaching segment for the San Miguel and Ermita. We wanted to take in into account into this evaporation condensation systems. So this is the urban water cycle goes. It's, go, it's gonna start and end from source to the waste water treatment. It, it, it goes from purity and distribution. And once after that, it can be used. Once after, after the usage, it, it goes and proceeds to wastewater collection. It, it, it becomes treated to the point that it can be used as a source once again. So these are drawing diagram for the for our plan regarding the water system. <clears throat> In the first image, you, you can see that it is a uh, very dirty water. All right. So this system is, is I mean this is, system is composed of two segments combined. While the second form is that two water water pipelines separated from each other. One is 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 the cleaner water, and the other one is a lot more dirtier. So this is the diagram including the rainfall segment. So, so furthermore, for the utilities, we decided that we, we're going to base it from the grift, which is located in Netherlands. So it's an, it's an integral part because Besides from looking a lot at the drainage river, there are also plants scattered in that water. It, 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 help, it helps provide the proper drainage flow around the city while maintaining a perfect trajectory for the city while not necessarily disrupting the balance of the roads and other pathway segments. So that's it for today. Okay, Idrius, next week I don't want case studies and this goes for the other groups because it's just case studies. You didn't do any design exercise. 
So Idrius, I want you guys to remember what you did in Design 4, wherein you were talking about the buco and how it informs a building. Okay, I want you to focus on that, all right? I try to develop yes. a building first based on an idea. Uh, I don't want you guys to create case studies anymore because apparently most of you do not know how to use case studies. Uh, the previous group just presented case studies. There's no you know, synthesis of that. I mean, uh, you're supposed to present a, your, your design, not somebody else's design. So uh, I was a, li a little disappointed with uh, those who presented just case studies. So uh, this one, you know, you need to present the process, Idrius. Remember, DE, our, our studio is all about process, how you go from one step to another. So where did this come from? Where did you get the circle? Where did you get the, the negative space? And why do you have grass on those uh, concentric circles? You know, you need to answer those questions. It has to be in a, like an instructional a presentation all right all right yes and sir repeat no more case studies next week uh unless sila three si maruno mag present ng case studies and sila janil pero the rest basically they just bombarded me with research that i can find in the internet i don't need to know those things do you get it if you if you want to put it on the river sorry idris but uh, i'll give you i'll pro, i'll use an example huh so uh, i want yes, uh, i want treaty special huh? so um even though you were my student even before pa so uh so you know if you want to put the river to put the building beside the river do you need to expound in it do you need to put a, a case study with it no you just put it on the river do you get it so parang you know we're complicating things that are simple already when you're supposed to be devoting your time developing a uh, a process developing a study or a design okay Idris, this yes, not, hindi lang ikaw to, Idris, ha? Okay? Ah, so, yes, sir. Hindi lang ikaw to. So, it, this is general. But nakita ko naman, may process ka towards the end. So, merong design exercise. So, you just need to backtrack and how you're going to uh, explain to me how you were able to come up with the final design. And, you know, create more studies. Um. If you want to focus on plantito, do so. If you want to focus on a plant, develop it, uh, you, may, you may do so. If you want, you can continue your buko or coconut uh, building here. Uh, but uh, of course, um, you need to make it relevant to Manila. Okay? So um, let's not focus muna on uh, the public building. Let's focus muna on a, a particular building. Maybe develop a residential building inspired by a plant. Or we use a plant, all right, Idrius? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, so next week, try to remember design for, ha? So parang gagawin lang din natin yun, okay? So uh, maybe wag na coconut para iba naman. So, uh, oh, yun nga po, sir, eh. Oh, so you use another plant uh, that will change the building, all right? That uh, is useful for the resident, okay? So, yes, mali uh, yes. Oh, can you, oh, kasi for example, saan ba useful sa akin? Uh, Siyempre, kung if you're cooking already, you need you need the basic ones like garlic, onions. I mean, that's a daily thing. Eh. So I don't know how you plant it because I don't have research about it. But it's something that you can explore because siyempre, if you're going to propose a plant idea, propose something that is actually usable for the resident. Kasi if you're going to propose, let's say... Uh, uh, what they call it, a plant that is that only grows in the forest. Why would somebody live beside that kind of plant, diba? So, you know, better use a plant that will be usable. That way, you can also create programs, floor plants, or activities around it. You get it? Okay. Yes. Message, message me, kung may may question ka. Ha? Yes. Okay. Sige. Thank you, Idrius. Okay, uh, Kevin. Hi, sir. Take a long, sir. I'll just. Hello, sir. Rinig ba? Oh, rinig naman. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, I'll share your screen. Ano na nag Okay naman may case studies, pero know how to use it. 
problema isang presentation puro case studies eh. So anong anong design exercise yun? So siguro pwedeng case study siguro 10% ng buong presentation. What I want to see is your processing, your designing proper. How you applying research? Sir? Oh, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Oh my gosh. Mag um hang on. Nalag lang. Um I'll try sharing my screen again. Screen please. Sir, can you see my screen? You're good, you're good. Yeah, kaya naman. Okay. Um, so a quick we'll we'll just go back quickly from what we did last week. Just a quick refresher. Um so we based it back on this idea of the tropical city, how we could do a hybrid on based on um, what an urban living can give and what we could learn to be a more resourceful human. So when you look back, um, the program that we we, we focus mostly on is the uh, when we did our case studies on vernacular architecture during the pre-Hispanic period. We mostly focused on how the Kalinga and uh, one of the other studies, which is not part here, it's the Tao Sung House, could, um, that actually affected how we did our initial form, building form. So it's not fully detailed, but enough to inform the idea, which will be presented later. And then as Kevin presented, um, can you run through quickly with this, Kev? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, what, we, what we decided to do to have a starting point was um, synthesize the programs, like I said last week, uh, the, the typical programs from the, from the houses a while ago, uh, since they're highly tropical, very uh, agricultural in nature, and very community-centered. Uh, we also returned to the the shape, the geometry of the octagon for its uh, tropical, tropical um, aspects and tropical structural aspects and how it can connect to each other in, yeah, in terms of geometry and in space. Okay. Oh, I forgot to place the, the location of the, the site, but it's fine. Um, I'll show later. Um, okay, so this is for this week. So in our, so we wanted to see what is the current context and what's usually seen uh, in a typical um, urban setting or in Manila. And usually you see Canindiria and Sari Sari stores. So you can see how the hierarchy goes just by looking at it. There's definitely a division with living. And then they use a lot of signages and the storefront. So it can vary with, with, with that. Yeah. So we're going vis we're visiting the um, what we discussed a while ago of how we processed the precedent studies was mostly by the octagonal shape as discussed last time with what was the, um, what was the benefits to it. So imagine these units are possibly um, follows along because I'll try to show a, an image from our master plan last time um, where, where our site will be, but yeah, I haven't updated it here. Here's a quick like elevation of how we kind of imagine just like a very quick sketch of how we we did this, and then um, it within that, that fabric, it's actually like a semi-translucent material, so allow air ventilation come in, and we're still solving the roof thing, so it, it, you could see like there's some similarities and contrast between the two um uh, what's next to each other but um 
Yeah. Um, if I can add, so this is one of the, this is the iteration that Tracy actually ended up with this week. Um, it's more of like after taking into context how um, mixed use residential uh, is being exists today and trying to change it following how uh, what we got from the native case studies and um, pushing it forward with the tropical nature of the octagon and okay. then yeah are you going to explain this or now you do it <laughs> it's your all right so um because this is something i did for emerge sir last week um but basically i was trying i used that to maybe try to save time to experiment on the octagon then um and how it could be uh implemented as a as a building or the components of a building so uh the nature of the process was more algorithmic and geometric uh still revolving around the idea of how uh an agricultural community and a tropical setting could be could possibly be put in an urban environment so uh the space like the spatial hierarchy was um iterated following uh, a periodic tiling uh since we noticed the new native uh the the communities that are highly agricultural and tropical also produce um fabrics with patterns so we were we wanted that that was one of the directions we wanted to um try out then i don't know if tracy do you have anything to uh well this as kevin said yes this was an exploration so he kind of tied it to emerge on how we could analyze it like in a somewhat um what do you call that process Kev? algorithmic yeah more of an algorithmic way so we could kind of um, explore on how it can create this somewhat new typology with yeah. regards to the current context. So this isn't, hasn't in, uh, infused like some specific idea like of the Kanindiria, like typical yeah. Kanindiria or Sari Sari store. Yeah, it was, um, also, it was also for us to see how we could generate a fabric, a physical yeah. fabric, and then these are just um, permutations that yeah. uh, we tried uh, and with different spaces and different, like the red ones are for uh, um, solo working, um, uh, communal working, and then the orange ones are for the different types of typical living, let's say for um, how could we iterate from a studio, from a loft, and then the green ones are related to agriculture if ever. Yeah, there's yeah. a further iteration. However, we haven't considered the plant units. Um, oh yeah, that so I I didn't place it there. But yeah, um, well, continuing from there, I remember being a fabric building. It doesn't necessarily just have it has to be the architecture. It could be somewhat about the like um typography or or what is dominant, such as if when you see it, what's divided is the living, the signages, and the storefronts, which either could be a canindiria, can be a, um, or any store in general. So this is kind of our take to it. The, the fabric, uh, the, the one that's enclosing it around the, um, this module, because it's quite modular and that's the advantage so you could kind of um, place openings where is needed also but um, this is I, I would I would have rendered it in a sense like pag sa gabi, makikita mo inside like some shadow some play of light because it's not fully uh, opaque so somewhat translucent it, it plays a lot with the shadow so you are seeing some level of what's the form inside but not yeah. really and so, then um 
Ay, sorry. So, Sige. About, uh, sorry. Um, but yeah, this is the terracing steps, which we haven't, um, well, I haven't explored the the entrance where, where to go through, but this is a quick sketch idea that I, that I did of how you could kind of hide some, give some privacy to some certain um, activities if you don't want to show uh, things. But if, if there is an extension, for example, the, the base, yes, you could have storefronts, but what if you want to extend all the way here instead of um, living, like your living will be here, but what if the this one, yung kainan ni tatay, they want to have like living or a workspace or both living, and the, they could use the fabric that we use for covering to hide that. And the yeah. extensions here, if you could see the protrusions, those are like suggestions where you could put um, signages. So they, they have the freedom to place those things. And there's some sort of order to it. So it creates this interesting street culture. And then, yeah. And this is kind of um the synthesis of like how um the orient uh, how how we explored explored the party diagrams in, in terms of the spatial hierarchy. Um so this one is actually um if you can see my cursor, this is something like an extension. I could imagine the manga sari sari stores they put like um setups here like chairs or um yeah they, they could put chairs right here and so that you have an extension to eat outside or like pull that up it will be hidden again so um also just to add why the oct uh, octagonal form because um i hope i have time to show the um the location of the site the front side is a six meter uh dry um walkway and the back side is a three meter walkway. So um, I had a sun study and it shows that it's well shaded, but the problem is like, um, how can you make this somewhat, let's say a neighborhood culture or you want to see people or if you allow parts of the fabric to be open. So if you, since it's oriented in this way, and then if you open the fabric here and here, there's more of an interaction rather than just looking straight into the street. So that's why we, I, I found this uh, form as what Kevin did to explore is quite interesting that it creates this somewhat neighborhood culture given the context that we have tight streets because we first addressed in the, our urban design is the thermal comfort. So how can we add more, more of the, um, the culture in here? Yeah, and um, to add to that, um, just referencing what we said last week that the octagon is very good for ventilation like, mm -hmm. um, and um, the permeation of natural light and shade at the same time. So uh, like in relation to our tropical city that has streets following and allowing wind to penetrate them for thermal comfort. So we were exploring to how we could make um, of probably like a fabric identity that's naturally that can naturally be ventilated um, at mm -hmm. its best. That's why we were iterating towards this direction. Mm -hmm. So um, this is like I said, this is just a party exploration. So the interesting thing about this, because Kev talked about um, like walls that kind of move or you kind of change it. So um, this shows like the modularity of like how partitions can be um, in certain um, directions that could change with regards to, let's say, orientation or how you want to divide. Of course, it could be subdivided further depending on the user. And then with regards to the still, like kind of the extensions that's protruding, I was imagining if it was, if there was like some hanging plants, if they want some sort of plantita plantita vibe, then um, that's also doable. So there, there's more because the, the way we designed the streets actually was, um, yes, it's more of shading, but the, the 
we didn't had much ground coverage that is for plants and these modules allow it like um as like a general um like a, some general dimensions that we could put as spots to hang there so this is possibly like let's say the roof plan um we, we could still introduce some sort of vegetation and um the the plant the the roof can be used for um like person if they have gatherings or, or people or like whatever they need it need it to be or pang lab yung mga pang laba and, and you, you still need that space so there's um so it's less awkward to see these on the streets or nakahang lang sa sa front um of the of the the property or on the back because it's both it both has roads or what you can do is if you have a window opening and then you have this um protruding um what do you call this this somewhat protruding sticks probably uh, probably yeah. like we also talked that those those could be like um representations of bamboo right mm -hmm. yeah uh cltb so it's like um it's like a processed bamboo that you get to, it's already it it kind of looks like a wood um yeah but then it's pressed so it's more durable and i read it's more fire resistant compared to the usual bamboo so that's how we see it and then yeah instead of displaying all your clothes then um you could just put you could put lines here and then yeah dry it let the clothes dry without showing off what's your underwear or anything so yeah, yeah. um so that was that's um, it for this week yeah. okay, um, we have um let's see if i have anything to add um so the materials since we were also like last week we showed that we were looking into native materials um if 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 they have a potential use aside from bamboo of course uh that's also why we wanted to iterate from this octagon because it's it's a very versatile shape uh but we haven't tried uh, morphing from it we tried um like playing around with it first seeing where we could go and makakatulong kasi yung stability of the geometry in making spaces in relation to um, the native materials we're going to use because we're not using, we don't see ourselves using like traditional, just traditional concrete and the ones that are um, used today. So um, to give context to the site, this is where we see that how our typology could go. So it's octagons or probably just here let's see if kaya dito because the curves are quite um yeah um so yeah it's what we're aiming to do is somewhat um once we learn a little bit more grasshopper hopefully we would be able to permutate it along this um organic yeah. shape and then play with the levels and then um if you could look in context as you can see this the 8 a.m 10 a.m. Sorry, wait, I am moving. Yeah, very, very flexible rin kasi yung geometry compared to a standard, um, like a typical grid one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but yeah. as you can see, sir, um, because th these are th like um, a three meter um, narrow street, this is a six sidewalk. Meter. Sidewalk. A sidewalk, yeah, sidewalk, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Pedestrian sidewalk. There's no we we didn't allow cars here. Cars are only along the side, but with with relation to our property, generally it shades almost all day for the for the pedestrians. So the yeah. question is, how can we still allow, um, you know, that interaction that it doesn't just go like front and back, but it could be probably adjacent neighbors or, or storefronts that it, it um, also be multifaceted right? yes so yes. so yeah um that's what we have mm -hmm. so far sir and um yeah the I context get... of the neighborhood right? right kev if i remember this is like the halal this yeah. is the yeah. um like dormitories this is like yeah. a business district this is the yeah. um anato? the new uh, civic, city civic, civic, yeah, civic, civic 
um, complex. Uh, um, I think it. Uh, I think it's worth mentioning, then, sir. Now, me and Tracy also have plans on um, revisiting, like um, integrating. Um, yeah, like we like we keep on saying agriculture, um, mm-hmm. in relation to our our, in relation to the other side of Taft, so my, the the redesigned yeah. golf course we had, but uh, my continuity throughout the master plan, and then, um, and then that in its uh that in its nature can also be, the, the identity of the commercial, um. Uh, Actually, you know, the product of the commercial uh, typology that mm-hmm. we are we have yet to discover, pero unfinished pa kasi yung cacao chocolate thing ko last time, sir. And uh, that's a very tropical, um, a very it that's a plant na sobrang taas ng potential in the Philippines because uh, of our tropical environment. So and we we also plan on revisiting that if appropriate should it. Or if not here in different of in our other typologies. Yeah. Yeah. Help, um with the business. Like other integrations with regards to system system. Although unfortunately I didn't make any sheets, which is kind of similar yung ginawa nina um Carlos and C Jazz. Um yeah. I've studied some, like, there are six different ways to do compost. Um, let's, because, uh, let, let's say if it's food or plant-related, it could definitely turn into compost. It just takes time. But this compost, uh, if, uh, I, I saw a model from abroad that if you don't have time to fully compost your what you gathered you could take it to a center and then trade it for compost to compost uh, to compost that is already degraded so it becomes a system na hindi nasasayang the scraps and that uh, the the excess of that because of the problem of the golf course with infertility of the original of the current soil if you have this system of collecting these um these what do you call this Leaves. additional waste that yeah, can be yeah. changed into compost it will help in the system of our proposed tropical city for the bamboo forest for the agricultural complex oh. and for probably for the houses that has um plants in it yeah because recycling and then compost um either or uh, was something that Sir Jerry mentioned um, that has potential in our master plan. So uh, that's that's all I have to say. Yeah, that's all, sir, um, for, for this week. So yeah. Sinabi wala naman drawing. Hindi joke lang. Grabe. Sir, kasi wala pa kami papakita plano pa lang. Kaming sinabi ng compost. Going back to what we have, um, I'm worried that the the, hex, the octagon, I don't know if it's an octagon or hexagon, octagon. Does, does not consider the urbanism. Like, mm-hmm. when you're looking at, the moment you space this side by side, do you still have the, in, the intimate public spaces, the intimate streets, etc.? You, yes. you might be designing this as an isolated island. Uh-huh, uh-huh. No, I want you guys to prove me wrong. I mean, is it that's my impression uh, now? Sir, uh, we we're still in the process of uh, exploring it more because yun ngarin parang masyado pa siyang mathematical. And um, no, it's okay to be mathematical because probably it might be useful for uh, the different uses because you have different plot sizes or plot shapes. So maybe yes, use the math, the math to sort of create a formula so that the, your permutations are flexible uh you can apply to different situations and uh and uh plot sizes or plot shapes so uh yeah i'm curious how this will turn out but uh but don't forget the typology creative typology because 
Uh, right now, um, this doesn't involve the process of making it unique, but as a fab fabric, this is actually a very good example of how you can develop it, even though without a strong idea behind it. Yes, sir. Uh, we still plan on uh, iterating further. Pa naman. Oh, because, you know, while this idea is good, because uh, it might disregard the master plan. It uh -huh. might regard the oh. essence of our urbanism. Because mm. these are designed, if it's going to be all hexagon, then what happens? Uh, mangyayari niyan, they're either it's all familiar, it will become oh, okay. monotonous, and then even the shapes, because it's all similar. And then uh -huh. at the same time, uh, you're not able to define the urban massing or the urban block because of the fixed shape. Because uh -huh. remember, your urban plots or the master plan, you created those blocks. Kaya siya, ah, di mga shapes na mga blocks. Kaya minsan, di ba sa city, existing cities, you have triangular shapes because it tries to define the street patterns. It tries to define the parks, etc. So now, if it's going to be fixed, the, uh, the, the building uh, morphology, then it's not only just a monotonous experience, it might be, you know, you might be ignoring the uh, what they call that the urban block, uh, the, the purpose of the urban block, and then and then consequently disregarding the intimate city's objective that we have we had. Yes, sir. All right. Yeah. But this is this is a, a very very good start, and hopefully it gets developed into something that is more relevant to the objective that we had uh, for the master plan. Yes, sir. That's definitely something you know we plan on working on. Yes, sir. Because uh, we're still like what we could imagine for this. Um, we definitely could remove some levels for some. So there's some sort of hierarchy or difference in terms of uh, yung with, with regards to the uh, the system that we build up. Actually, the way you imagine, or, like, if you're able to solve the urban urban block already. Now it, it doesn't look all hexagon. I don't know. I don't know yet. Eh. Now it doesn't yeah. feel like it's all monotonous. I don't know. Maybe answer that question. I could be wrong. Uh, the, yeah. Down the road, maybe when you have a rendering, you even have permutations of what if it's just an ordinary building. But you still have remnants of the base idea. So you know we have those different uh, uh, different variety basically because it you know down the road. It will all depend on the user, on how they'll use it, on how, yeah. you know. Yeah, so it will be an interesting imagery for the city. So uh, I'm also yeah. curious about the composting thing, development of the typology, because we don't have a lot of time. Okay? Yeah. All right. Yes. I guess that's it, guys. So I guess uh, for the others, thank you for... Uh, wait, may question ba kayo, Alison? And ano? Um, Kev? Um, okay, so, uh, naman, sir. we plan so, on continuing now. How about the others? Uh, sir, so yung sinasabi mo is just um, we have to show how it could kind of establish right. some I, like variations of identity so it's not monotonous. Uh, no, yung sinabi kong last ano la, wala, it's a very minor uh it's just a minor, not a man concern, but it's a minor thing. Lang. I'm trying to imagine how your presentation is going to be like. So parang, I'm just imagining a rendering with you know, different permutations. With yeah. different interpretation, just that. But yung kanina, when I was talking about the monotony, it has something to do with uh, the current prototype or the pro prototype that you yeah. created because it feels yes. like it's dictating it's all hexagon. And that disregards... The objective of the master plan because it will be monotonous because it's all hexagon. So what if you create a mathematical uh, computation that makes it that the per, that uh, allows it to permutate according to the shape of the block? Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yes. We'll try, but at the yeah. moment, di pa marunong gets gets. Okay. Well, like it, you started that day in you know, criticism. Alam mo yes, Gets uh, 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 you know, uh, and you have to remember that you created the master plan. So try to make yeah. puro hexagon yan. Mawala yung, yung periphery, mawala yung 
uh, the quality of the urban block. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Do you get it? it? So, yes. Think of that lang, ha? Okay? Yeah, yeah. Got it. Yes, sir. Thanks. Okay. Oh, sige. Anything else, uh, guys? Do you have any questions? The rest? Again, take everything as a constructive criticism. Kung medyo napuruhan ko kayo today, it's just about the work and I want you guys to, to change your attitude towards it and somehow be conscious and be aware of uh, how you're doing things as well. Uh, you know, our clients have different expectations. Your bosses, your future boss will have different expectations. It's just normal to be criticized. Okay, uh, any questions, guys? Sir, uh, regarding yung ArcDes 5 master plan, I'm <clears throat> Um, I'm still cleaning it up for the video and teasers para ma-render na. Sige lang. Uh, baka unahin ko yung kilalaan sa ano. O, oh, sunod yeah. ko yung kilalaan sa na sila kalit Jenny. All right? Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, guys. I'll see you guys soon. Uh, good luck on your next uh, series of work. Okay. Uh, I, I guess uh, I'll say bye. Bye. Thank you, sir. Bye, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye, sir. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir.